What have I been heist? Oh yeah. Hey guys, I'm going to be doing an interview and playing some songs on the Song Project's uh, like artist broadcast thing. You can find them at facebook.com slash Lux, L-U-X-E, Song Project, or just type in the Song Project and it should pop up. Um, come on, hangouts can be fun. See ya. Doing stuff like that is always cringy. I'm always like, oh, I hated that tape. Oh, yeah, I'm no, like, I, I'm horrible at that stuff. I don't want to do it 50 more times. So I'm sharing this to my page. Oh, I'll put it page. on my page. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> last, like, last second. Yeah, no, this is like always like the first couple minutes of this yeah. is, is is us just like sharing the event into the, the other. Because you can't do it before it starts. Yeah. So I will then give an intro. Welcome. It's the song project. We didn't have one last week because it was Valentine's Day. And I had mentioned that I was going to maybe come down here and stream uh, a couple love songs. But I didn't because it was Valentine's Day. And I people things to do <laughs> I don't think we really did anything but you know enough said I didn't do it so our last one was with Lucas McIntyre that was awesome two weeks ago and this week I've got uh, Joshua Belliardo hello the so, uh, awesome the spoken phenom <laughs> is that the word <laughs> He's, he cries about love and his songs that's I don't know like what am I was a town crier but I'm like the spoken right. crier <laughs> now you know we can plug you in yeah. I don't know that we need to. You've got a you've got a pretty projective voice, and Thanks. we're, we're going right to there, so we should be okay. Okay. Uh, unless you want to do some beatboxing or something. I'd love to towards the end. Yeah, that's fine. With okay, me. and uh, the mic's on, so we're good on that. <laughs> um, so I wanted to start off, and like, how old are you? You're like I'm twelve. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You look fifteen. <laughs> I was gonna say. I'm glad I can pass. I'm not twenty-three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when did you first? Start right, like how did you get into songwriting? What was your... Well, the initial bit of music that like inspired me was rap music when I was eight years old. My downstairs neighbor Chuck, um, he showed me an artist named Twista, okay. and I was just so blown away by the fact that this guy could rap really fast. Uh -huh. I had never heard anything like that. Like, it might you heard rap before, but it was just like the like Eminem stuff, stuff, or, right, right, stuff right, you know. Right. But I and I'd never heard like like just that manipulation of, of speech and right. I was just really impressed by it you know back then I didn't know why I was impressed but it just right, attracted right. my ear and he showed me a song called Let's Go by uh, Twista, Trick Daddy and Lil Jon okay and, and I was Lil Jon okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was running around reciting it practicing and practicing it and just trying to get as fast as I could doing it and then over time I just kept picking up and I kept getting better at it and then um, when I was I want to say 11 or 12 I started beatboxing okay because uh, I saw a video on YouTube that did the sound, and I was like, what the hell? Right. How does he do that? And then when I learned it, I was like, okay, but well, how's he making it that fast? And then I learned to roll my tongue inwards. Okay. So, Whoa, so, yeah. That's and, really cool. Uh, thanks, yeah, I put a lot of time into that. Uh, and like, I just, you, I love showing that. You're clearly right. beyond the, the boots and cats oh, face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I hope so, <laughs> like 12 years of it. Um, but, and then uh, I started just learning other sounds, like, you know, case snares, learning how to like echo my own voice and things like that. And when I was 16, my friend Devin Schultz, which rest in peace, Devin, um, he passed away last year. Um, he sold me my first ukulele. And that ukulele is named Nancy. Uh, and within the first week, I wrote my first song, which was called I'm in Love. Which is fitting because now every single one of my songs could be appropriately titled that. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice a theme when yeah. I was listening to your stuff on YouTube in preparation for this. Uh, uh, yeah. There was a lot of love oriented. Uh, it kind of reminded me, and, I, and it, it makes sense that your your path to this was through rap because I, there's something about your songwriting that, like, you know, like, I've, especially this far, now I've, you know, I've had a number of different songwriters on and the approach that each person comes from kind of echoes their path into songwriting. Yeah. And yours has that, like, there's a little bit of an R&B sort of sheen to what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, well, I'm glad that that's portrayed because that's something I definitely want to be. Right, so, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because it's not like, you know, like uh, like last my last guest, Lucas McIntyre, mm -hmm. You know, he's from Texas, and he's, you know, there's a very Americana, yeah. like, you could you could sort of see that path of how he got to where he is now, yeah, definitely. 
you know, through sort of country and that kind of thing. And, mm-hmm. um, and then for Lindsey Johnston, it's, you know, it's, there's like this kind of bit of jazz. But it's just interesting to see how that, how it reflects in, because we're all doing the similar thing, right? We're yeah. taking an acoustic guitar, yep. singing a song, and yet there's still these like just different, uh, approaches. different approaches. Um, That's the beauty so, of it, though. So what do you, what do you see as like, um, who are some people that are like sort of influential to you that are out there? Um, honestly, my biggest inspiration is Justin Bieber. Okay. Yeah, I I love me the Biebs. <laughs> uh, I like like just pop singers mainly. Okay. Mainly, I I enjoy acoustic renditions of their music more than on pop beats. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if it's R and B, like Bieber has an album called Journals that was not promoted, and okay. it is his best work. Interesting. Just incredibly impressive vocally, just. Like my runs, I attribute my vocal skill, the thousands of hours of practice I've put in, to practicing the things I've heard in his music. I've learned a lot from artists that, you know, a lot of people are like, wow, you listen to him? I'm like, yeah, of course right, I do. Right. Like, yeah, maybe maybe they haven't had the best rap, like personality wise, or they've right, done some right. stupid stuff, but that doesn't knock their talent. Right. You know, and people are like, well, they use auto tune. Okay, everybody has auto tune yeah, yeah, on, their, okay. on their song. And like, so, yeah, no, Justin Bieber. Uh, Brendan Neary is a huge one from Panic okay. at the Disco. Okay, yeah, he, yeah. He inspired me like crazy. When I first started, it was Christopher Drew from Never Shout Never. Um, that so was like that. So that was sort of like, so that was kind of your first. Because I'm thinking like, so even though I was describing that I can still hear this kind of R and B thing in your singing, that like clearly like what you're doing with the guitar sounds totally different than like your rap. Music, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So what was that? You got the ukulele, and then it was like stuff you were listening to that you were sort of emulating, or? Uh, yeah, I'd say it definitely had a, a, a big part in it, like, especially Never Shout Never, especially, because he, I said especially like three times, um, <laughs> like, 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 no, uh, he started on the ukulele, or a lot of the songs that he was releasing when I first started hearing him were on the ukulele, mm-hmm. and so that kind of inspired me. I liked the sound of it, how it was kind of light and fun. Um, I find that anything on the guitar that I write is always more serious and sad. I, can, right, I just, right. it's just how it is. Okay. But yeah, um, just really started with Never Shout Never, and then the other artists that I just kind of learned about still played a part, like vocally and how I was structuring my vocals in like the runs and just like the technical stuff of it, you know. Right on, interesting. I don't think I've, I, you were definitely the first person to, to uh, List Justin Bieber as, as yeah. an influence, a lot of people which are is awesome. I think it's great. <laughs> no, I think you're right. You are pretty, but but I think that that you know if you're if you're wanting to make pop music, mm-hmm. and by that I don't necessarily mean that you're wanting to make Justin Bieber's music. Yeah. But if you want to make popular music, it makes sense to study popular music. Exactly. Like you know, like who's doing it, right? And what are they doing? And yeah. what are the tricks and the tips yeah. and the things that Absolutely. what are the little the little turns that they use, the hook, the kind of hooks, mm. you know, and that's something that, like, I know that for myself, you know, I, I came to songwriting through punk rock and, mm. you know, a really different kind of path and reggae and stuff like that, okay. and I never listened to pop music growing up yeah. at all, really, mm. and kind of had a kind of disdain for it that, that a lot of musicians do, yeah. you know, like, yeah. and it wasn't until more recently that I've learned to appreciate it as a form in, of its mm. own. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's okay, like, there's a certain point in your life where you're like, okay, you know what, even if I don't personally like something, it doesn't mean that it's not good. Exactly. You're like, when you're young, yeah. you're like, if I don't like it, it sucks. Or someone right? you like says it sucks, and you're like, right, right, it right. Sucks. yeah, it The sucks. thing is, is that, like, regardless, like, it's blatant that there are some types of music that are a lot more difficult to write. Yes. There's always a yes. formula, but there's science behind it. Yes. No matter what genre it is, right. the reason it's stuck in your head, right. even if you don't like it, right. they, there's 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 some serious stuff going right. on. Right, and it makes sense to study those things exactly. if you're trying to make music that yep. is, you know, because and there's all too often you get people that are like, they want to be so different. Yeah, I want to yeah. just be so different, and then they're like crying because nobody wants to listen to their music. Exactly. It's like, well, you know, don't cry about it. Yeah. If you want to be different, you know. Maybe eventually the world will catch up. Yeah, but maybe they won't. Right? Right? That's literally everywhere. It's happened in Spokane too. Like I've met musicians who I've listened to some of their stuff, and like, well, I always respect everyone's art. You know, some things are just not for you. You know, but right. and I'm thinking, well, you know, I don't know if this is exactly gonna get you a, a snowball going. Right. And they're right. gonna build you what you want. Like, I've noticed that some more popular musicians in the world will have what is like 
out there. And then right. they have like side projects. Right. It's the stuff that they more so like right. to dive into. But you got to get somewhere with that following first before you can really do that sometimes. Right. right. That's where music can sometimes become work. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 of course. Of course. Well, why don't we, why don't we do a song and then get back to okay. talking about um, songs? Okay. We'll jump in. This is the one I usually always start with. Um, wait, where do I play that? <laughs> um, yeah, when I uh, do my gigs, I typically start with this one. It's kind of like my vocal warm-up song. Okay, yeah. uh, it's called Walk the World. It's actually on my first EP as well. I listened to this on YouTube yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You know what, what, really quick before I play this, there is a line in the song where um, I was doing a harmony, but I did the wrong note. So it's still on key, but it's the wrong one, and it creates this kind of like dissonance sound. And I meant to switch it out on all my streaming platform stuff because I got it fixed. But every single time I uh, order new CDs, I forget to do it. So I keep getting <laughs> batches of new CDs with that one note. Like, there's, as a songwriter, you know, like, there's yeah. that one thing, yeah. you always hear it. Right. So, yeah. Even though nobody else. Exactly. Really yeah. I've never yeah. heard anyone go, dude, that didn't sound right. right. <laughs> you know? Right. But yeah, so this, <laughs> this is Walk the World. I'm 
And that, that's actually when I was listening to that song yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, that was really where I started hearing that something about the form kind of speaking a little bit R and B to me. You know, like that the uh, that's the the seventh, the third, seventh that kind of leads into the four. You know, uh, um, the funny thing about you saying that to me is I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so that was, <laughs> that was gonna be my next question to you was was. What's your level of like I, music I, education? Also, Tom, I don't know any music theory. Unfortunately, I really want to learn the circle of fifths. <clears throat> I feel like that would open up my songwriting a lot. Right. I'd be like, wow, I know what chords I can go into. Right. But you know, I don't know scales. I don't know circle of fifths. I don't know those things, and it's very frustrating. But I also feel like it's given a, a kind of like a purity to my music that's allowed it to be really what I felt. And I think. I personally, I mean, I'm proud of myself with what I've been able to accomplish with not knowing much. Right. However, there are musicians out there that have all the knowledge in the world, right. but haven't had like some of the opportunities I've had. I don't really like feel guilty about that, but I just, I just haven't had like. They that don't correlate at all. Yeah, you no, know what exactly. I mean? like, yeah. yeah, I haven't had like that drive to be like, all right, time to learn what notes are in this chord. And stuff right, like that. right, right. So while, well, yeah, so I, I, I don't know music theory, right, um, right. but I probably should learn some. Well, you know, I, I think a, a bait, uh, like, it don't, I don't think that someone necessarily has to learn, like, in-depth music theory. Mm -hmm. I think it can be really helpful to learn some of the basic language of it, just because at some point in your career, you're going to work with other musicians. Yeah. And having that common language, like, oh, go to the three, let's go to the, yeah. you know, like, just being able to talk <laughs> Yeah, in a way that you're absolutely. both like, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. or do this, let's invert this chord, you know, whatever it is, you know, and that doesn't take a lot, you know, mm -hmm. like a, a course at a community college, yeah. or, you know, just like an intro to music theory, absolutely, and then yeah. you just kind of get that language, and then you can, you know, because that'll help, like, when you're, when you're putting the album together, and you've got people playing on it, yeah. and you have to describe to them what it is you want, yeah, you exactly, know? although, although, you know, there's, there are plenty of, there are famous musicians who, you know, have done, really odd stuff with that like they don't yeah. even describe it musically to people when they get to play they're like really? i want it to feel purple you know <laughs> what does purple feel like, <laughs> like oh, okay okay <laughs> that's funny too purple too purple right. so tell me about that song like going you know like does that start off with the chords does it start off with the lyrics with an idea where does it come from uh chords Chords. Almost all of my songs have been. I found a chord progression that I liked, and then I uh, I wrote around that. Or occasionally it'll be one line. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Like right. I have a song on the EP called Left, and the hook is "Good for You." Oh yeah, and I like that song. That's got a good hook. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't really play that one much anymore because in the bridge there's there's one note that I have to go for, and right. even though it's well within my range, I always tense up before I go to it. Right. So right. Always flat. So it's like psychs you out a yeah, little. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's so frustrating. But um, I thought of that while I was in the shower. And actually, a lot of my songs, I've come up with the hooks while I was in the shower. Right. Uh, but yeah, mainly it starts with the chords, and then I'll, I'll play them. And like, I guess there's a major difference between writing a song when I feel like I need to write the song when I'm trying to write a song. Right. And I feel like a lot of songwriters can relate sure, to that. Sure. Um, with this, especially this, like I was just going through a breakup. I was living at my friend uh, Daniel's house, um, and we were watching the League of Legends World Championship with their friend Brandy and some other people, and I was writing Walk the World, just sitting there on the floor. And when I came up with the... I thought it was just so pretty. Right. And I was like, okay, I'm definitely using this. And, I, and it's just... The, They're just kind of playing it over yeah. and over. And don't even know that I would wipe the world for you. You don't even realize how my dream means to you. But, like, with it, I don't remember whether or not I came up with the... Uh, like the full chorus mm -hmm. before writing the verses, 
right? Because it's just been such a long time since I wrote yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, it, it, almost all my songs within this genre start with chords, a lot, like the first line, typically a verse line, then chorus when I get there, and then if I decide that I want to bridge in the song, which usually comes right. from I find chords that work with it because I don't know music theory, right, I don't right. go, okay, and I can go into this. Right, right. Um, so sometimes I'll write a song that doesn't have a bridge, sometimes I will. And yeah, so it's kind of like I, I play the song out from the right, start right, to the finish. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, I find that like once you get like, if you get the first verse and a chorus, you're gold. Absolutely. Like writing, uh, writing second and third verses is yeah. usually pretty easy, mm -hmm. at least for me. You know, yeah, it's like I feel that. Yeah. it's it's that it's that initial thing. So, do you have like when you got that chord progression? Is that the way the song is now? The melodically was that sort of like the first thing? Were there other other iterations? Do you play around with melody while you're playing the chords? You like um, during the writing process? You know, weirdly, like I write all my songs in red pen, okay, and I don't edit my songs. Okay. A lot of the time, like, or let's go with like ninety-nine percent of the time, I have not gone back and changed something in a song. Um, obviously, like if you looked at my song, which which I book, which I can't find, it's <laughs> I need to find it. Um, like, there's some things where I have a line crossed out, but that's only because when I was like, essentially, it's like freestyling the song. You know, like I'll I'll come up with that one line that really brings me in, right. and then I'll play it and just kind of sing and whatever comes out right like I might be like okay this is a good point this is how I want to describe it I might want to describe it a little differently but I'll keep that premise that idea right right and so essentially I'm just kind of working line by line right you know right. so yeah I I kind of work similarly to, to yeah. that as well like sometimes it's even gibberish though yeah like you know it's like because for me like you know the rhythm of the the cadence of the vocals yeah. like like and clearly like with rap this is a, this yes, is a big, I was big issue that. but like um to me it's really important like the rhythm of the of the yeah. vocals and so often i'll have off chords of melody and off the cadence yeah but i still don't have the words but yes. i know what the words are going to be exactly and it makes it easier to write them because then i'm constricted right like mm -hmm. it's so hard you have that blank piece of paper yeah it's like what, what, am I, what do i write? write exactly you know but when you know that it has to go uh, 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 yeah. uh, then it's like, okay, I've got to fit words into yeah. that. Then your brain's like, yeah. well, this is like three syllables. <laughs> right. What words do I know? I do? Exactly. You know, actually, my, one of my biggest inspirations with rap music, Tech 9 writes just like that. He'll go, bada ba bada 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 da ba 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 follow me, I'll run a planet, I'll run a gamma, I'll come Right, right, right. You know, and that's, it's such a cool way, because one of the cool things you can do is you can literally come up with a way that you want to do it, record yourself in, like, audacity, play it back, and then just listen to it until the words start forming in your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is so cool. Right, because that's, that's part of, like, human psychology. You'll start to hear things, yeah. even if they're not there. Yeah, like listening uh, to songs in reverse. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, backwards. It kind of makes me think of, like, the old, like, scat singers, like yeah. the jazz, you know, where it was like, yeah. exactly, yeah. it's like taking the human voice and saying, like, well, maybe there's something, you know, like, you're, like, in rap, it's like approaching it like, this is a rhythm instrument. Yeah. You know, it's not a melodic instrument. It's a yeah. it's a drum. Yeah. And I'm just doing it with my with words. Exactly. Like you my know? friend uh, my friend Jonathan, he just made like a little Instagram story. That he's uh, tagged me because I made this little post on my other Instagram that was like, you have a friend. Well, like, your secret Instagram. So it's not it's not like a secret. It's just I I realized that with my Joshua B music one, I wanted to keep it like professional photos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I had it just being like randomized. So I made Joshua B personal, um, and uh, I posted something on there that was like, got a friend that thinks they can rap fast, show them this. And like, I do this like quadruple time rap in it. Uh, and my friend Jonathan tags me, he said, I realized that people who rap fast, it's like they're emulating a hi-hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's so true. Right, And I didn't right. think about that. So it's so when you right. said the drum thing, I was thinking, oh, he'd like to hear that someone else also has that, you know, right. insight on right. it. Right, Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. It's all about the rhythm. Absolutely. All about the rhythm, any genre. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I find that um, it's very interesting to me, like how the rules of or rules of rhythm is being bent. Like, there's some rappers out there now who sound like they're lagging on their own beat, right, you know. Right. And it's like, you know, I don't know. It takes a few listens maybe to kind of yeah, yeah realize it's it's not exactly my idea of what I'd go to to listen to. Right, but like, right. I mean, he's the rapper I'm about to mention. He stays on on beat. Can't necessarily always understand him, but like Young Thug, okay, I love that dude. He is so genius. If you like really listen to his songs, he uses his voice like an instrument. Right, it's right. really, really creative. And yeah, he's auto tuned out like crazy, and he's considered a mumble rapper or whatever. But right. I, I realize that people shouldn't knock that kind of music because 
there's music you want to pay attention to, and then there's music that you have on in the background. Right. You know, you're right. just hanging out. And I feel like music that you don't really need to pay attention to lyrics, it, right, it, right. that's perfect for that. Right. Or if you can't really catch the lyrics anyways. Right. <laughs> well, I, I, I feel like a lot of that music is it's about the vibe of it anyway, really. Yeah, definitely. You know? Like, in rap, a lot of instrumentals are what carries the song anyways. Right. Right. Or within that genre of rap anyways. There's right. more conscious right. hip-hop that is more driven by what's being said. But, yeah, I just I think it's incredible all the different avenues you can go within any genre. Right, right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting to think of like the how, if you look at like the the evolution of, of hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first, the first rap music I ever listened to it wasn't like the first rap. It wasn't like Sugar Hill Gang stuff, mm -hmm. but it was like, <laughs> but it wasn't long after that. I mean, the first yeah. stuff I heard was you know like Beastie Boys, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Run Digital, DMC, Digital like the, you know. Oh yeah, yeah my yeah. dad always likes yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, I went to see. I remember going to see like Public Enemy back in the okay, '80s. Cool. You know, yeah. And, um, but but you listen to like the way that they rapped, yeah. And rhythmically, it's so much simpler. You know, it was very yeah. like it was like look like Shakespeare. You know, iambic pentameter, like da 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 da. And the rhymes in itself are much more predictable. Right, like right. Hat was hat. Right, hat was rhyming with hat. And then you hear these, <laughs> nowadays you hear these rappers, yeah. and it's it's fascinating because it's so yeah. polyrhythmic. Absolutely. Yeah. Do, 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 yeah. Do, do, do. You know, it's much more yeah. like it's like jazz as opposed to rock and roll. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it, it's everything develops and like evolves, and it's crazy how it yeah. goes. Like, actually, can I rap you the thing that I, I would love about? to hear somebody okay, rap? So I'm yes. probably gonna mess up rapping this because it is just really fast. But uh, here, let me see where's my. I sent the lyrics to myself the other day. Gotta search for me. Okay, while you're searching that, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. How I'll, I'll have to find out how fast you're rapping, mm. but like. How can you possibly rap while reading the lyrics? Like, wouldn't you have to have them in your you head? Know, that's the thing is, like, as I've developed doing this for so long, there's a lot where I can hear a fast rapper and I can hear what he's saying. Now, there's some people I'm not going to call out his name, but I've called him out on his video. Said, "Post the lyrics." I slowed your stuff down, and there's nothing. You're like not actually saying there's, yeah, there's any no words. words in this, <laughs> and he would not post his lyrics. Right, so he's right. fooling people, and right. people are falling for right. it. Um, but, but maybe that's okay too. You know, it's it's still like you got bands like Sigur though. Ross, right? Like that guy's. You ever heard of them? No. They're an Icelandic band, and they're really cool, yeah. uh, really atmospheric and stuff. But mm. yeah, he sings all their songs in a made-up language, like all of them. Like you, there's really? you'll never understand anything he sings because and it's there's, all, so there's really no words. It's to it. all just gibberish. And yeah. <laughs> but it's awesome. It's very cool though. Yeah. Because then it takes it away from. I'm not saying I'm not giving this guy an excuse. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is trying to fool people, but. But it, it, it kind of it can actually take people out away from like you know listening to the voice and it yeah. becomes an instrument, instrument you know? yeah and that's cool because like my brother for example he plays guitar bass drums keys he told me when he listened to a song like when he was he started on drums he would hear the drums were like his primary source of what he was paying attention to and I just thought that was so weird because I don't pay attention right to right, right like when I'm listening to music like hardcore like deathcore stuff. Um, there's a band called The Night in Texas that I really like, and then like when I hear like the do -do 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 like right, right. just like the way they formulate like the breakdowns of the yeah. song, like that's when I will hear that kind of stuff. But for right. me, it's always been vocal, right. always. But that's and that's really I mean like I came to it uh, the whole thing from uh, being a bass player, mm -hmm. and so for the same thing like I like I hear the bass line in every song I hear. Really, like, that's the that's first so thing that I tune into. I'm like, oh, killer bass. Yeah, my wife will be like. I can't even hear the bass. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. My, my father will say to me, like, oh, that's got such a cool bass line. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, hold on. Like, there's a bass? Yeah, <laughs> let me go back. Yeah. I. It's just, it's it's really cool to me that based on what is, like, in your head, your head, what, your ears, What direction interest. you're kind of coming in from, yeah. Yeah. So let me uh, look over this room. Okay, so the thing I wrote was, is I was, I was trying to write. Do you want me to beatbox while you're doing this? Oh, yeah, yeah. I might need you to. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be now, entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Boots and cats, boots and boots and cats. And cats. There you go. Um, I a long time ago I made a song called Trappin' is Easy and I was making fun of trap music and it was, or not really making fun, but it was my just me being silly. Poking around. I put this it, song yeah. together in like the, that song in like thirty minutes because I was really inspired just when I started listening to M Thug. And I was like, this is a really cool way to like write music. So I was just like rapping nonsense and then I and then I would fill it in. Right. And uh, so this time I wrote a more serious one. Uh, and I hope to get it all polished and ready because March 9th I'm performing at the Knitting Factory with Billionaire Records doing a, uh, a rap show. Free tickets if you're 21 and older. Actually, I think it's just 21 and older anyways. Free tickets from the artist. Um, I'm not sure. I have to look at the event page. But um, I forgot what I was saying. What was I just saying? 
Uh, 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 oh, so uh, this is this is what is it more like? There's still kind of some humor in it, but it was more of a serious thing. Right. So it was like uh, intricate rhyme schemes over a trap beat. So I had the thing. I was like, um, add the sauce, then I mix it up. I'ma let it cook for a minute. Pull it out, gonna add some flow. I'm gonna show you the bubbly sentence. Wanna go ripping and check out the necklace? I'm gonna be ripping, got a bug the sentimentally expensive. You can rip everything I'm saying within my sentence. All these other rappers are lacking vocal and audible comprehension. Can't forget to mention all of the other ingredients that I'm throwing in for flavor. You can go and try to knock up on the quality, but I'm bringing only the very best to the table. Yeah, I be ripping them up with the flow. Better be known, no one in front of me getting. Oh, well. Ripping them up with the flow. Better be known, no one in front of me getting. You better be breaking them up and the ticket the rhythm. I added the rhythm and take us all of my rhythms. Let's speak on better be quick. If you be thinking you're taking away from my legacy, I will go make it a point to go handle you. And then explain. <laughs> then, then there's like a bad word. Yeah, so it's like really fast. Yeah, I, I wish I would have warmed up to do that. I wasn't expecting to do that here today, but and it's like ripping them up with the flow. Better be known. No one in front of me gonna be better be bringing them up and the ticket the rhythm. I added the rhythm and take us all of my rhythms. Let's speak on better be quick. If you be thinking you're taking away from my legacy, I will go make it a point to go handle you. Like so, it, it like it's like a. Da -da 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 Right, 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 right. You know, and that's yeah. really cool. Yeah, so that, that's that's something exciting. That clearly took about. a lot of practice. Oh. Like, no. were you, like, teenage Josh in his room just... The amount of saliva right. that has been on my computer <laughs> Yeah, screen. I would have bet. And, like, I, I always say this after I beatbox for people, but I always go, like, it's cool the first time you hear it, but I know how my dad feels. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I, you know, it just thousands and thousands of hours of practice because I learned as a kid, like, while all my friends were out partying, right, having, right. like, doing the normal, like, teenage life thing, I was honing my craft, but I didn't yeah, realize right. that's what I was doing. It's yeah, just yeah, I had a great time doing it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I remember after after my neighbor had showed me Twista, learning, I was on YouTube and I accidentally found Tech Nine, and I was right, like, right. "This is the holy grail of fast rapping. This is perfect." And that's you know, and then it was just learning verses and verses and verses. Right. And I used to make uh, speed rap cover uh, videos and post them on YouTube, and. That's what I spent my time doing, just learning fast verses. But oh, something I wanted to go back to because I realized I didn't finish it is like, over time of rapping like really fast and stuff, I can hear it, kind of understand the way they're doing it, and then I can read along with it and like do it with them, even right, if I right. don't know the song. Because it's it's not exactly like trying to sing to a song you don't know the melody of. Like no. you know the words, but you don't know the melody, it's not gonna work. Right. With rap, you can kind of, it's almost like your brain is sc scanning the syllables because you mm -hmm. can only, depending on how fast you're going and where you started in the bar, you can only fit so many syllables in yeah, yeah, yeah. each measure or whatever. So you can kind of realize like, like when I be ripping to check out the necklace, that I be ripping got a value that's sentimentally expensive. Like within the very here, like without blah, blah, with hearing the very first couple words, I could be like, oh, he's doing kind of like a stutter flow with it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can kind of pick up on that. And that's just kind of right, intuition right. Of, of experience. With right, it. you're listening to a lot and, and of these things, and and there's certain patterns that yeah. are going to be used. And, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because I guess if, I mean if that's what music is, right? It's patterns. Yeah. If there's no pattern. It's not. It's just going to be exactly noise. You know, I actually, I really, I heard, and that's something really interesting. And you said that I don't remember where I read it, but somebody said I don't know if it was like a mathematician or something like that. But they said that eventually we will run out of new content for music, and music will likely more so go into the um, like being noise. And you know, it's kind of funny because it's kind of happening. Look at dubstep, look at el this yeah. electronic music that's blown up. I mean, there's still so much more to be you know written, but I doubt yeah. it's going to happen like anytime soon. But I wonder what it will transform into when it right. gets there. I mean, there. I mean, there've already been movements like that, you yeah. know, avant-garde movements in music where people were like, "We need to, we need to deconstruct," you know, like, like in classical music in the twentieth century, composers started to, to, you know, rebel against yeah. the forms that have been, you know, like, well, this is the way Mozart did it. This is the way we do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is the way Beethoven wrote it. Mm -hmm. And so you get into this really atonal stuff that's just not pleasant to listen to. Yeah. You know, and. And then it always kind of, you know, the pendulum swings back around because people will get it's tired like of listening to it's noise, like right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the thing is, is that you, it's probably true, but but we're probably already there in some ways, right? Like, yeah. like even that, like the song you played, right? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a nice song. Probably all the elements of that song have been done before been done. by other people. Absolutely, yeah. But it's all about like how are we putting these things together? Yeah. Because I mean, honestly, we all use the same twelve notes. Yeah. I mean, how many isn't variations of 12 are there? But even you within know. that, though, isn't that amazing what we, what the whole world musically has been able to do? Right. Like, right. That's amazing. Right. That's, it's beautiful. And, like, the, th the fact that, like, no one, no one on this planet can ever listen to every song ever made. Right. There's too much. No, there's too it'll, much. It'll never happen. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It, it, is, it is amazing what the technological age has done 
for the democratization of music. Yeah. I mean, of course, the downside is none of us make any money anymore, but... <laughs> yeah, and that kinda, I kind of missed that, obviously. You know, I didn't, I wasn't doing music professionally at a time where I was able to take advantage of that. You know, I, like, I still get paid gigs, but like selling music, right. it's more so I feel like you're selling your personality. Yeah, yeah. It's a whole different kind of vibe with, yeah. with what it what it means to be a... Uh, it's like, you, you have to be more than just like, yeah, you're, you're just going to write You're not a musician, you're an entertainer. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, that, and a personality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what will separate people apart from others. Right. The ones who will be successful or not. Yes. Um, and yeah, and that's the thing is like, I'm, I'm very thankful that I'm not like an introvert. Like I love being the center of attention. You know, right. everywhere I go, and that annoys people. It has, <laughs> it has annoyed people in my life. Um, but it's just like, that's who I am. And I'm right. gonna own that. Right. And I'm gonna let it drive me. Like I have no problem walking up to somebody I've never met before. Hi, I'm Joshua Belliardo. Here's my card. Check out my music, please. Right, like, right. I don't have that fear. Right. Like some people right. stage fright, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I get scared yeah. people are paying attention to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I have like, you know, I've been, I've been, I come from a from a classical background, and uh, I've been playing on stages since I was, you know, I don't know, six years old or something, yeah. right? So I have I have like zero stage fright. Yeah, none at all. Like I get I, I mean, if I had to get up and give a speech, I would get nervous. But like playing music, I'm not. You know, yeah. I can get on a stage and play music, and I don't have no fright whatsoever. Yeah. But I just don't have that. I don't have that. Like I I can't go up to people and be like, really? hey, you should listen to my shit. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, if they. Maybe if they find it and they like yeah. it, yeah, it's all right. You know, like yeah. that. That's it's, just, it's weird. I, I just don't have that part yeah, of it. Personality traits yeah. and just all those things. It, it makes a difference within it, definitely. And I think that I think. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Right, right. You know, like I'm so glad. Musically, you know, obviously we all have parts of ourselves that we don't like, right. um, and there's always a dark side to each person. Sure. But like, I'm so thankful. Like Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. You know, honestly, I never. Or Luke Skywalker. I was gonna make a really dumb joke there. I was gonna be like, I never got into Star Trek. <laughs> I was just gonna no. wait. <laughs> I was gonna wait for you to look at me and be like, "You're an idiot. Get out." <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're but, done. No, we're done. End stream over. Stream. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna watch some movies before you go, Josh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm very thankful to have the music that I, the musical ability I do. Um, but you know, that kind of goes back to something I was saying earlier. I realized from a very young age that anything you want to get good at you have to put the time into it yep you know yeah there are some people who are naturally faster learners or just have a really good talent for something right, right. but you have to put the effort in yes you get out what you put yes in. thank you for saying hours, that hours, hours absolutely and that's yeah. that has been my driving sort of educational idea about mm -hmm. music and it, it's not just music but any creative endeavor yeah and i feel that that as a society we need to we need to shift our understanding of what it means to be creative because I think yeah. all human beings are innately creative. All Absolutely. of us are, you yeah. know. And whether you are playing a guitar uh, or building a chair, yeah, it's the same process, it's right? Like art. You do it over and over, and you get better at it. Yeah. And, but but in our society, we tend to put you know like you you play the guitar. We put that in a different category. It's like mm -hmm. oh, I wish I could play the guitar. You know, like people say yeah, that, right? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, you're so talented. Yeah. I tried to play the guitar and it just sounded horrible. Yeah. It's like, well, dude, the first time I picked up a guitar, it sounded horrible too. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Not only are you wrong, but you're doing me a disservice mm. because you're discounting the work that I put into it. Yeah. You're time. saying, oh, you've got this great gift. Mm -hmm. You, you know, just oh, Joshua, it. you just, oh, you got such talent. Mm. I mean, that's nice to hear. It Absolutely. feeds our ego. Yeah. But the reality is, it's like. Well, no, you could do the exact same thing I'm doing if you sat in your room and fucking played for two hours every exactly. day or three hours every exactly. day. Exactly. One of the biggest things I always hear, and like obviously voice is a little different than instrumentation. Some people have tone that they can Yeah, there's a with, timbre. That, but yeah. nonetheless, like I always tell people, like even if you don't sound good singing, sing. It's right. expressive. It's right. beautiful. It, it's doing something crazy for your brain. Right. You know, like especially women. Yeah, Anytime yeah. I'm hanging out with a, with a girl and I'm like playing music for them or something, I'm like, all right, sing with me. Like, nope, never. No, and I'm no. like, <laughs> okay, next. <Right. laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like, why is it that why is it that in our society we all accept the idea that like you're not going to be a brain surgeon just because you were born with a talent for yeah. brain surgery? Everyone understands that you have to go to school for a zillion years yeah. to learn how to do brain surgery. Yeah. And yet we, you know, when it comes to like art like drawing or something people were like i just don't have it yeah 
You know, it's like, well, no. There's, there's Why been, is it any different? Yeah, there's been clear societal <laughs> standards put on it. There's a plethora of work for something and something else. People then just assume. Because, like, when you have, you know, everyone going through school, they're like, oh, school was work. School right. was hard. I had to put right, effort right, into right. it. So then when they think brain surgeon, they're like, well, I can't just go grab a scalpel. Right. What do I have to do? But then music, they're like, oh, I can just go to the store and buy one of those. Right, so right. I feel like they, they think one is easier than the other. Yeah, well, Obviously, yeah. I'm not going to go try to operate on someone's brain. Right. But I understand that if I were to put myself through the process that allowed me to, then you would be able you to do, do it. You can. Right. You can put right. any, you can do anything you put your mind to. Right. Anything in this world. Exactly. And, and that's why I think, like, that. anybody could be an amazing guitar player. You might not be Jimi Hendrix, mm -hmm. but you could be amazing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, absolutely. there's always gonna be like, there's always gonna be a Mozart out there. Yeah, and there's those people, do, there's always outliers. Yeah, you know, there's always like the the 16 year old on the drums yeah. that's just like you're like, what the fuck is that? Yep. you know, like that's not even real. Yeah, you know, or a 10 year old. You know, yeah. but those are the outliers. That's mm -hmm. not 99 percent of the musicians. Though I do genuinely you know? wonder what makes that happen. I know. Well, that's a whole. To me, that's almost a whole different subject. Subject, yeah, right? Because it's because it's like. What is it about the human brain that, that mm. makes some people yeah. just have that thing The first on. thing that would pop into my mind is that uh, whatever portion of the brain that controls, like, motor, like for example, like a drummer, motor function and creativity, those things, probably are firing off a higher percentage usage yeah, than yeah. someone else. Yeah. Like, I mean, it still doesn't make sense how there are, like, young kids who are making, you know, symphonies and things like that. Or, right, right. Like, arrangements for things like that. Right. That's confusing. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. Screw them. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, and, and the thing is, is, is that I can usually get people to kind of agree with the idea when it comes to, like, the technical aspect, like becoming mm -hmm. a good guitar player. Yeah. People are going, okay, yeah, you need to practice becoming a good guitar player. But I could never write a song. I just don't have that. But yeah. it's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, our creative process is the same thing. Like, the more you sit down and write songs, yeah, my first song, I would never play for you because yeah. they just, like, just a big bag of suck. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, but you you write a song, you write another song, you write another song, and eventually they get better and better. Yeah. And so just like the guitar, that any human on earth, if they put their mind to it and wrote a hundred songs, yeah. that hundredth song is going to be good. Yeah, you're going to have It so might not be great, great. Yeah. but it's going to be good. Yeah. You know? You have, you have that ability to compare where you were to where you are now. Right, and, right. And, and, you know, while I, like, as a musician, I actually don't listen to a lot of music. I don't is, either. Yeah. yeah, and I feel like it not necessarily because I'm worried about my creative flow being disrupted or you know like infringed on or something. Right. But it's more so like I just music to me is my expressive tool. You know, right. when I am hurt, right. I want to write a song. When yeah, I'm yeah. angry, I've written songs. You know, like that's just the way my brain is. And I think you know because I have friends who are poets. And they're like, oh, but I I can't I can't write a song. I'm like. You just need to figure out melody, man. You right, need to change right. how your how your sentence structures are ending a little bit. But right. you basically are writing lyrics, right, which right. is you know the for, the foundation of a song. Um, and then like I have friends, or people who can play instruments really well, but they can't sing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Now that confuses me because right. I've just always been able to. Right. It's right. never been a problem. But then I have friends who are just like I can't do it. So right, just all right. those little things like that. It is interesting. Like there are limiting factors. I feel. Well, like, see, you probably developed those skills simultaneously. Yeah. Possibly, Whereas yeah. uh, you know, oh, another person yeah, might have yeah. just played the guitar yeah. for years and they're really comfortable doing that, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden you're asking them to start a new instrument at the uh, same yeah. time. And you know the what I mean? Is just, yeah, it's like trying to rub your head. And, uh, right, right, yeah, right. I, you know, but as like a little kid, my parents were always influencing me in terms of like, or not, or like, they were encouraging me to sing. Like, right. I remember I have this really funny memory. God, I was a little kid. You're telling the world we have 1.7 million viewers. Wow. So, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'd like to thank my or mom. One anyway. <laughs> hey, Ellen. <laughs> Oprah, if you're watching this. No, I I have this memory. I was a little kid and I wrote this song and I was singing it like I was an opera singer. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was showing my my mom, I think, and my brother is in the hallway laughing at me, and I was like, right. "Why are you laughing?" <laughs> like, I was so serious about like you know they always encouraged me to be like creative my dad plays guitar though he'll uh, say oh, i don't really play guitar yes he does right, right. he plays guitar and he has inspired me i'm sure is the reason why i ended up where i am because there's that creative influence right right so but they've always been supportive that was gonna absolutely. be one of my questions too. yeah my, my my parents are incredibly supportive of all my musical endeavors and awesome. avenues that i i explore um you know obviously my mom would rather come see me perform singer songwriter stuff than hear me on a stage yeah, rapping yeah yeah but yeah. she'll still come you know yeah, and of course that's, and that's yeah. cool um, my dad is constantly walking up to people. Hey, check out my son's music. You know, he he wants me to succeed so right. bad. 
So, yeah. yeah. Well, you I know, when the, the first time you came to the song project was with your dad, and I remember. Is that thinking, when I cried? I believe when, when you played. I played, while played you were left. Playing. I played left, and yes, I cried. Yes. Yes. Uh, who is? Who is? I didn't even remember that. Uh, Caleb. Caleb. Yeah, Caleb. Was yeah. it Caleb? Yeah. Okay. Who's the drummer guy? Phil. Phil. Okay. Yeah. Um, Caleb was like, "Can I buy you a beer?" And he, or, and he came up and gave me a hug. Yeah. And he's like, "Can I buy you a beer?" I was like, "I'm only 20." He's like, "I can't buy you a beer." <laughs> and I was like, "It's okay." But yeah, no, I do remember that. I, I think totally that was the very that. first time I ever cried performing my music, and it actually happened on stage a few times afterwards too. But yeah. that just shows me like these songs matter to me. Right, right. The story There's behind, a catharsis happening. Yes, there, yeah. and it's it's like a wound gets opened a little bit when you perform them, especially if it was a very painful subject. Right, right. It's, it's like a it's like a portal back into what was. Right. You know, right. and. I just think it's it's incredible that there's something able to do that. Right. Music right. is just there's so much that can be said for it. You right. can use it for everything. Right. You know, right. Like it's being used for literal therapy. Right. You know, or like for example, like kids with like autism. Oh yeah. Music yeah. Yeah. Calming yeah. down or something. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And like another thing, I know this is a little different, but like people with speech impediments singing, they don't have the speech yeah, yeah, impediment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is wild. Don't just sing all the time, dude. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and, and and it's and it's it's amazing too because music is the like the one thing that you could you can go literally anywhere in the world to yeah. any society, and they will understand music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you could you you could hum something to anyone in the world, and they can yeah. and it's familiar in yeah. a way. You know. Rhythm. Yeah, you know, all that stuff. It's people, wild. People put it together. You it's know? like the most human thing in yeah. a way that we have. It's like as the one puzzle you know? piece that connects us all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Other than you know, like yeah, the language, like, language and things like smiling. That. And so, yeah, love, like micro expressions you know, and things right. like that in your face. It's universal too, which I right. think is really cool. But but as far as things yeah. that we express, yeah, it's yeah, in like so basic. Terms. Yeah, yeah it, it's just so incredible. Yeah, it makes you really wonder like how. Why? Right. Why? Exactly. Right. In fact, I was actually reading something interesting recently about how, uh, you know, we we have found a few other species that are capable of, uh, like, feeling rhythm. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some birds that, you know, yeah. that can, like, you know, feel a rhythm. But there's really, we haven't found any other species that seem to be able to, like, melody and rhythm together, like, to, to, to grasp mm -hmm. music. Yeah. You know, so as, I wonder, as a thing. in a sense, then, if if it's not far off to say that music is intelligence, like in like a way, I think it is. I think it's, or it requires an intelligence that allows yeah. one to to have a narrative structure, a specific con level of consciousness. You know, because because yeah. there is a there has to be a narrative structure, and I don't yeah. mean like the song has to have a narrative structure, but yeah, music itself is a narrative thing. It's, yeah. It starts here, it ends here, and it, it's there's, a, there's a, a melody is a is a narrative yeah. line. Yeah. And if you don't have the thread of your brain, and there's probably people, there's probably some studies out there. There's probably people with like traumatic brain injuries. Yeah. That cease to be able to recognize music. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. You know, yeah, or you can't. You just you don't have the thing that lets you put those notes together and say that yeah. makes sense. It just sounds like. Blah, 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 yeah. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, so when you're doing your when you're doing your like singer songwriter thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're a writer that's really like, you know, it's like I'm gonna pull my guts up and and yeah. show you them. You yeah, know, I, like, I like to turn my stomach inside out. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like here's my here's my wound. Yeah. You know, let me let me display it for you. Mm. Um, you know, and I've, I've talked to, to writers who are more, and and I'm also sort of in the other camp too. Of like, yeah. I don't tend to write songs like. Well, I don't have a really dramatic life, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I have a good life, it's great, I love yeah. it, but I don't I don't have, like, a lot of this, yeah. you know? So I can't really, I don't have anything to really pull out of, like, my pain, yeah. you know? I yeah. had great parents, I had a good life, you yeah, know? It's yeah. like, but, um, so I write more more abstractly, I guess, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I feel like there's that, that kind of, like, sort of a puking your guts up sort of approach... Is that possible with the rap as well? Because I feel yeah. like that's is it definitely. I wrote a I wrote a song called "How I Feel About You," uh -huh. and it's um, about someone close to me who struggled with addiction, and that song just has. It's more of an in-your-face song compared to like the previous ones that I had written for them, mm -hmm. saying like you know the other one was kind of like you know we got you we're supportive you can get through this this one right, was like right. dude. It's it's years You're later for a cliff and, and things are and still not changing. Right, yeah, right. so it's like. Absolutely, you can yeah, yeah. you can get emotional. I've written, you know, even 
it even translates over. Like, and it's more so dependent on the beat with when it comes right, to, right. to hip hop. Like, if I'm writing something that's just got like a sad piano thing to it, like I'm gonna get emotional on that. Right, 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 right. Um, or yeah, it just it kind of it really drives what the song is gonna be. Like my R and B music, the beats kind of have like a sexy feel to them. The way it's smooth, yeah, 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 you're yeah. like, okay, you know, I know where I'm gonna go with this. Like, right. let's bring out the caution slippery when wet signs, ladies, because right, right, it's going right. down. Uh, like I, I get all the women in the area <laughs> <pregnant. laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> now I have to use that line. No, but like it, it's 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 so. I forgot what I was saying again. Why does that keep happening to me? Dude, I do that. My ADHD is like. Boom, boom, boom. I think you were lying to me when you said you didn't smoke pot. Then. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. You know. Uh, like what? <laughs> Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> Wait, where am I, bro? <laughs> Where's my? Let's car? go play video games. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who actually swears me watching this is probably like, I hate these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How stereotypical. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, I, yeah. Oh, yeah. So like with 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 rap music, yeah. I've written several songs. Uh, I like. I even. I don't. I don't produce my own beats usually. Um, I made one song called "Devastated," which actually mm -hmm. I used one of a piano riff that my brother made, and then I just went into FL Studio and I laid down uh, just like a little pattern that came to my head. Mm -hmm. And I was listening. The cool thing about being a beatboxer is that I can kind of beatbox what I want yeah, and yeah, kind yeah. of add to it. However, sound design and beatboxing are worlds apart. Um, and that song was like, the first lines was like, it starts as a subtle rush, this pain that I fucking get insane is the fact that I can't evade all of this regret. It takes all of my emotion, it drains me to nothing left. It can't be gone and all right. It's a lot, yeah. but like nonetheless, it's like very poetic. But it's it's it shows you like through it, I'm still hurting. It's still raw, like yeah, that. yeah, very, very much so. And I, mean, I guess I guess when I asked that question, it was kind of I was already answering it in my head. Obviously, mm -hmm. it can be yeah. raw and and emotional. I feel I, like it's just done less. Yeah, and it's, I, I guess I was thinking of it in terms of, like, with rap, like, I mean, it does have to be a different approach, right? Like, like when you were talking about songwriting, and we were, we were talking about, like, chord, you know, you make a chord structure, and then you're, you've got the melody and this mm -hmm. hook, but with rapping, it's, how, how does the approach differ? Like, when you're going to, like, I'm going to sit down and write a rap song, how is that different approach? First, I find a beat that I feel like, okay, I dig this. It's I like a lot of... It resonates with yeah, something. I like beats that kind of have, like, a jazzy feel to them. I think those are really cool, because then it's more than just, like, a... Right, right. You know, sound. And so I, I like having, like, the kind of... Like, I have a song called Anxiety, and that's over, like... Oh, yeah, a, I've heard that, yeah. yeah. So that one, like, that's over, like, a... Like, it's got, like, a, a trumpet or something in the background of it. I just think it adds to, like, the way it feels. And then it's all just, like... Listen to it, and I'll come in and be like, ba da 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 da, or da ba da ba ba da ba da ba da da ba da ba. Like, just so it all like really a, de like how I want to come in on it. Do I want right, to come right. in after that first kick, or right, do I right. want to come in before the kick or on the kick? Right. It's all just like, for me, like I gotta reiterate, like it's that first line yeah, yeah, that yeah, starts yeah. everything yeah, for yeah, me. Yeah. Everything and like occasionally, if I'm listening to a beat and I'm just like kind of bouncing to it, I'll come up like I said earlier, but like with like a a rap hook. Right, right. Like right. the the hook for this this one that I did the ribbon of my butterfly, but I mean yeah, yeah. is like you ain't you're you can't complain if you ain't gonna change shit. Ooh, yeah. If you ain't moving a muscle, then use an irrelevant lane, bitch. Like you gotta work for your way. You're trying to get that right, song's right, called right. recipe, and I'm playing off the fact that rappers always talk about like cooking up uh, crack on a stove recipe, but right, my right. recipe is my recipe for success. Right, right, right. So it's like. I'll find something and I'll be like, oh, that's that's good. Like, I dig that. And I can, like, really feel like people would kind of bounce to that. Right. And then I'll keep that in my notepad file or something like that down the uh, down the, uh, down the the line so I can be like, all right, how can I fit this in? Sometimes mm -hmm. I can. But, yeah, yeah. Like, but it's always that first line, always, that just right, kind of right. starts the whole feel of the song for me. Like, I'll know if I want to write a happy song or a sad song. 95% of my songs are sad, right? which right. I'm sure you've noticed as well. But I feel like that's just where I'm at in my life. You know, yeah, I yeah. as I get older, you know, if I, if, I, if I find that love that, you know, we all search for, then my songs will become more happy because I'll be inspired by that uh, love and infatuation and just desire to uh, express that through my songs. Right now, I've dealt with a lot more hurt and pain than I have positive in my life, and I think that's just what really shows. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, first line. Sorry, right. I talk so much. Like, no, I mean, that's what the show. That's what the show is for. Like, yeah. That's why you know this is what I envisioned the song project as. Where's my like, Adderall? Talking about <laughs> songs and talking about songwriting because yeah. I have yet in my life to meet a songwriter who doesn't enjoy talking about songs. Yeah, you know, and usually when you talk to when you get interviewed, if it ever happens, it, 
they're not usually talking about the songwriting. You know, yeah. people are asking you like, but what? You know, when's your new release coming out? Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's some basic questions, but I like to, I just like talking about yeah. the creative process. I think it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. I and mean, it's really cool to see if people differ from the way you do it. And because right, then you right. can take that and apply it. Like, I feel like I've always written songs kind of with that scat kind of ba 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 way, but not as conscious about it. Yeah, yeah. And now, like, when I heard, like, my one of my idols in rap, Tech Nine, say that, I was like, you know what? There's That's... probably a reason why he's so capable of writing these songs. Sure, so many sure. songs. So I was like, That's the way to do it. So I really think to anyone who like wants to make rap out there, do it that way. Is he the guy that had like a beef with Eminem or something recently? Oh no 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 no! That was MGK, Machine Gun Kelly, okay. and Eminem. Okay. Was, yeah. I don't. I'm not. I'm not really big <laughs> on that world, so I don't really know. After it. a damn gun, have a man bun. <laughs> <laughs> like Eminem got him so good. I love it. I love that. Like it's cool because hip hop culture really goes off of that kind of like beef thing. Um, yeah yeah. But I I personally just think like I don't. I'm not a huge listener of uh, Eminem. Like, I like him. I like his music. But I, I've never been a f real big fan of Machine Gun Kelly, really. It's just been... It's just not been my style of rap. Um, but I, I personally think, from the most unbiased side I can express it, like, Eminem killed it. Right, with, with, that, right. that, with that battle, Eminem killed it. MGK did good. It's an in entertaining song to listen to. Right. But Eminem came out on top with that. I don't know if you've yeah. listened to those. I have not. I have not. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've listened to Eminem over the years, so, yeah. you know, and I, was, I loved Nine Mile. It was a great movie. Nine Mile? Eight yeah. Mile? Eight, eight <laughs> mile? Why did I say Nine Mile? We live in Spokane. Oh, nine right. Mile. Nine Mile. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. But actually, uh, what's something really cool I want to add is that uh, little rap verse thing I did, when I go really fast, in the video that I did, I'm doing 12.2 syllables a second. Okay. And uh, Eminem has a song called Lucky You, and he has a verse. And I learned how to do that. Can I do it for you really quick? Yeah, please. All right, so he goes, um, But I think it's inevitable. Then a will button to press a lever to pull to give me the snap, though. And if I'm paying attention, I'm probably making it bigger. But you've been taking the digs in a fucking backhoe. On the break in a minute, got me thinking the finishing. Oh, hold on. Put it English. On the break in a minute, got me thinking the finishing everything. With the seed of benefit and the reaping the benefits. I'm asleep in the will again. There's a picking and thinking about the evil intent of another beat. I'm a kid again. Because even if I got a independent pill again, even ketamine, I'm at the fed of me. With the minute, the better will be 70 or 300 milligrams. And I might as well, because I'm going to be in the villain again. Like, that's 10 points of this little Yeah, there's so many words together. Um, and I I think I read somewhere that the way, the reason that happens when you deliver it is because it's like consonant syllable, consonant syllable, or something right, like that. Right. But it's just so cool hearing Eminem, who was never really a fast rapper, yeah, yeah. evolve into it and showing people like, hey, right. I can do this too. Right. My friend Nathan was telling me, he's like the biggest Eminem fan right. I've ever met. And he's like, no matter what comes out, Eminem shows, you know, I'm capable of doing it. So right, like, stay right. relevant for that long too. It's right. really impressive. Well, you know, he but, also, yeah. I mean, he, I was, I remember, you know, first catching notice of him just because he always has had a good sense of like a, sort of an off-kilter flow yeah. you know it was never yeah. that kind of straight yeah. it was always like yeah. you could, now it's go, really, like, really kind of yeah he'll, he'll he does like these rhymes where it's like he's splitting the word in half in the middle yeah of yeah yeah and yeah. it's like it's uh, it's like, really fascinating from a language perspective. yeah exactly yeah. he's like in that same one that i was just doing he says uh bring max to ace back like bring master ace back like right, the way right, he just right. chose to split that is like people don't think that way right so it's like right. that's some serious serious knowing your shit type thing right right you know Wait, are we allowed to cuss on this? I'm just swearing. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. That's when you should have looked at the camera and just... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And I love how uh, vocally music is like is like a very pure form of vocal manipulation. Right. Right. Yeah. It's taking what was and creating more out of it. So. Right. Especially with rap, though. I, I, and I'm not going to lie. I, I actually perform... Uh, well, not perform. I like performing rap music more than I do my acoustic stuff because I can actually move around, get into it yeah, more, yeah, yeah. you know, point at people, get people involved. Right, right, right. It's more of an interactive thing. You know, standing in front of a microphone and singing, there's yeah, only yeah. so much swing I can do. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's made me want to get one of those headset microphones. I really want to get a guitarist. To be completely honest, I'm not even a real huge fan of playing my instrument. I would rather be able to deliver a flawless or more technical vocal performance over playing my instrument at the same time. Right, right. And like my friend Sean, who's an incredible pianist, uh, I'm hopefully gonna talk with him, try to get him to learn some of my music so we can do some performing and have him be on the piano. Um, 
my friend Casey is an incredible drummer, and he and I came up with a really cool project idea to kind of do a, like a rap thing with him doing the drums and stuff. But like, there's so many incredible musicians here in Spokane. I just need to find them and yeah. get spark their interest so I can. I don't want to put the thing down forever, but it'd just be nice to not have to focus on it. Yeah, like, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Being more interactive, because like we were saying earlier. Being an entertainer is huge, right, right. and I feel like it kind of limits my ability to yeah. interact and entertain yeah. and engage. Right. So. Right. Yeah. You know, I was uh, I was just listening on Spotify to this guy. And I'm not gonna remember his name. Some some guy from the UK, songwriter. Mm. Um, but he he had such crippling stage fright. He was so introverted. Mm. Uh, but he was able to make that work for him in terms of that whole you know personality thing. Yeah. He did like. People he had he had originally had written and released some music that he didn't even intend for a bunch of people to hear. It was just like, yeah. but then you know people found it and was like, yeah. oh my god, this guy's amazing. And, yeah, and That's cool. So they he was wanted to, they wanted him to do this like the record company wanted him to do this like a, a, a concert, mm. but he just he was like, there's no way I'm gonna get on a stage and play. Yeah. So he did this like weird like art gallery thing where because uh, he also paints or something and, mm. and people would have they had tickets for it. And if you had a ticket, one at a time, people would go up and he would like open this little door, so it was like, like their face was poking through, and then he would play a song <laughs> just for that one person because he crazy. couldn't stand on being on a stage. Wow! But he was able to then like figure out an artistic way to kind of do something yeah, with that and it. make it work. You know, yeah. like <laughs> I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's obscure ways to do it, but it, and it's, it's good. It right, and it's interesting though that like sometimes those things that we think of as deficits. Mm. Uh, can actually be our strengths if we learn exactly. how to creatively apply them in a way that's yeah. like, you know, like, oh, what if I make this, uh, do something with my, yeah. what I see as a fault, yeah. and turn it into a strength, of, yeah. uh, you know. And that's, that's, I feel like, the prime use of creativity. Absolutely. Absolutely. It can, that can be really cool. Right. Not taking the easy road. Exactly. Right? And <laughs> nowadays, everyone, you know, I was hearing, I don't remember where I heard it, I can't remember who said it, it was in an interview. It, actually, it may have been Eminem in an interview that I was watching. He's saying, you know, back in the yeah, back in the day, you had to sound different to stand out, and now it's like if you don't sound like everyone else, you don't get paid attention to. Right. But when there, when there are those rare cases of people who are so unique that it's just intriguing and beautiful, I they should have people paying attention. To them. Right. Like they should right. get that attention. Right. And some people have that that specific. Some thing people just have just that thing. Like, takes well, them. Eminem was, I think, one of them. Like, yeah. He, he, when he came out, I mean, certainly Dr. Dre saw something in him. Oh yeah. You know, and it was like when he came out, it was like he just dragged hip hop yeah. a whole different way in a, in a way. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and that's what it takes is those sort of outliers, and then suddenly it's like, oh, yeah. let's go this, let's go this direction now. Yeah. You know, like exactly. that's killer. Exactly. But you know. In the hands of someone else, maybe with less force of personality, or that didn't quite get it, it wasn't right. Afraid to then then it's just somebody like ah, whatever. Yeah, you know yeah. that dude. No one's ever gonna pay attention to them. Yeah, he had, <laughs> he had no filter. Right, and that right. was huge, especially with rap. You know, all the disses and like the the punchline he made, like dissing celebrities. Like he was ballsy. Right, that, you right. Know, that was nowadays. With but it was always clever. Was, it was always very clever. Yes, it wasn't just you know? like a stupid. It shot. wasn't just like I'm, you know. Girls want to suck my dick, and yeah. you're a piece of shit. Exactly. You know, it was, it was exactly. like, it was funny He's going to make smart. you go, is he talking about Right, Felicio? right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, and that's what is so cool about it. But nowadays, it's, you can't really do that. It's so, like, like with, like, politically correct stuff. Like, you right, have to watch right. what you say. So yeah. I feel like Eminem yeah. did it at the right time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he still yeah. offended people. He was, yeah, he was oh, like, he did. It was, it was a lot know? of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was, like, boycotted, and people were like, don't listen to this guy. But, you know, there was some was early, up. like, homophobia stuff that yeah. was kind of a yeah. big issue for people. But, yeah, exactly. Um, so I feel like we would be remiss if we didn't hear at least a little bit of beatboxing from you. Okay. You know, oh God, I should have. You don't have to. No, I'll do it. But, but I'm just, I'm, I feel like when we turn I've heard the camera you do it, off, it's awesome. I feel like when we turn the camera off and I go, damn it, could have done that better. There but, is no camera. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's last week's episode. Oh, okay. You just like to play. With the... uh, Mashua Meliardo, who's oh, another guy. Is that guy good? Kinda like you. He's bad. He's better than you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I figure. Everyone is. I suck. <laughs> So now that I now that I realize where I've been like I didn't realize it's flipped. Wait, is it? Yeah. So I move around a lot. Oh, dude, I move. I'm like your foot I'm like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> I hate I hate watching it, but I keep it on here just in case. Yeah. In case one of our 
probably 17 million viewers. One of our 17 million viewers decides to uh, ask a question or you something. You know what I should have done is went and shared it to my page, not telling people to go to it. I mean, right, it, right. That's what I That's what I did. But it's, it, it's, it's oh, all well. good. It will be on YouTube. Cool. Probably not tonight, but in okay. the coming days. So. You don't think that uh, any of like your citing like other people, the uh, like the M and M's thing, that can't get you copyrights issues, yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically, I suppose it could, but yeah. the odds of that happening, yeah. Considering there's been, there's been a considering how my views, problem, how many views we've got, I would say it's not a big yeah. Maybe concern. if it was a twenty million, but seventeen right. million is probably yeah, yeah. We're, I think we're okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. I live two F O. trips people out every time I do it. Yeah. You don't realize that going with your voice is much more difficult than going, hey, hey, hey. It's right. just, it's just it's, learning how just... to manipulate vocal volume. Right, right. And also, one of the tricks is to drop the first uh, letter off of the word. I don't really need to do it because I've done it for so long, but it's like going, hey, right, we right. Like, right. like you. It's. I think it's that it's that such a quick change mm -hmm. in, yeah. in volume that, that, definitely, definitely that people don't work. normally do, so it kind of throws mm -hmm. you off. It's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love doing that. It's funny, especially like in a tight space with people. Where I'm just right. like, hey. They're like, wait, where's that? Where, what? Right. Yeah, I was right. doing that. Uh, I went like, to... Can I have your... <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I was at a, a music festival uh, called Bass Canyon. Yes. So, you know, raves, people are uh, partaking in some particular substances. And I'm walking out and I turn to this girl and I was going like, hey, how are you feeling? Oh my God. And she goes, she goes, are you, are you doing that with your voice? I'm like, what? And the other dude looks at me and like, I was just, I was <laughs> messing with people. He totally fucked with so people, that's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was like my highlight. I love doing that. So I, if I go to either of those festivals this this year, I'm gonna make it a point to like really try right, to right. mess with people. It'd be actually kind of funny to make like a YouTube series video, right? Right. Like that. Oh, that'd be so funny. Yeah, like beatboxer. <laughs> you know, like yeah. using tips of the little tricks of beatboxing to like fuck with people. Yeah. And it, it was it was just perfect though for for that kind of festival because like afterwards uh, when you walk to have you ever been to the gorge. Oh yeah. Okay, so you know that little uh, that little store before you get into yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So I'm standing right there and I'm beatboxing waiting for my friends and I actually had a little crowd form around me and it was so cool. I'm doing my dubstep like <laughs> like stuff like that and these these people are just like clapping for me and everything right, and I was right. telling this dude looks at me and goes, Dude, you're like the best ever and I was like, No <laughs> I was like, No, not even close. I was like, I do well with it, but I am nowhere near that and he's like he's just like overly right, ex right, right. excited and he's like, That was like the best way to end the festival, dude. Thank you. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. You're welcome, man. Yeah, I love it. Like I said, there's been a lot of slime on my screen. Right, right. And but you know, like I said, I would not change it for anything. I mean, I would, I would love to not struggle with some of the things I do in my daily life with like anxiety and things. Like maybe, okay, maybe I'd trade some of it to get right, 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 right. But in terms of like where, where I am right now, I'm glad that I spent the thousands of hours on everything I do doing what I do. 
it's given me the ability to one make money off my 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 passion. Right. So it's not right. like I'm working. Right. Right. Um, but I get to express myself. I can help other people express themselves. Right. But the main right. thing, the most important thing to me ever with music, is that I can give people something to relate to. Right. Right. I don't want anyone to ever feel like they're alone. I don't want anyone to ever feel like their their situation is unique to the point that they don't have anyone that can say I feel right. you. Right. Right. So you know, while yeah, my stuff right now is all more so based around like love and heartbreak. That's an everyday thing for people. Yeah, of course. So of I course. feel like that's a very big thing to be yeah. able to relate to people with. So sure. That's sure. that's that's my passion right there. Is that that is the yeah. biggest thing that drives me. Is well, you know, I think I think for people with uh, you know things like anxiety, depression. These are like things that like sometimes it, it can be a really important part of, of a healing process for people to to realize how non unique they are. Yeah, you know what I mean. Not to say yeah. like oh you're just like no, everyone else, I, but, I what you're but it's that it's that feeling we close ourselves off and we're like no one else feels this yeah. way. It's worse for me than yeah. for everyone else. But then then suddenly you realize it's like. Wait a minute. This is like everybody feels this. Yeah, you know. Well, this is I, like, I, I, I get what you're saying. I do disagree a little bit. I do think that some people feel more intensely than others. Yeah. Like yeah. I have friends who can go through oh, like sure, a breakup sure, and they're sure. just like whatever, and I'm like, Ugh. right, <laughs> you right, know? right. So it's it's like, but other than that, yeah, you know, this that's the standard human experience. Right. That's what, but that's what I mean. Yeah. I'm not. I, I don't agree. I don't disagree with you yeah, at all. No, I just, yeah. I, I'm just saying that it's like. You know, we can we start to think like this is, you know, no one else understands me. And then you hear yeah. a song, or you 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 meet somebody and yeah. you realize there are people that understand yeah. me. Like that this isn't that. I'm not just rush. a freak, you yeah. know, or yeah. whatever. That tingly yeah. like, I realize the this. I feel this. Right. Yeah. It's right. such a, that's such and a it's so important. Thing. Yeah. Because you know all those things, particularly like a depression or anything like that, it's like, mm -hmm. it's all about connection, right? Like yeah. making a connection is what. Is primal. It exactly, it has to be part of the human experience. It's like one of the most fundamental parts yeah. of it. You know, if not the most. Yeah, like how does you it know, like if, <laughs> if you don't like if you don't hold a baby, it'll die. Yeah, even yeah. if you're feeding it. Yeah, you know, Isn't that crazy. I mean, that's that's that shows you right there, like or we like need a critically human ill connection. baby being cuddled, right? Recovers, right? There's there's something like I feel like. Even though we've developed far in science, we have so much that we're gonna oh, figure yeah. out. That's gonna yeah. be like, wow, we could have saved a lot of people. Right. You know, right. like something that we just haven't realized yet. Right. Especially based on what we already know. But yeah, it's incredible and it's beautiful. And it's just communication and being able to relate to people, I feel like without it, right, we'd be well, that would that would take away language completely, right, right. and then without language, we probably would. Well, music would be more percussion based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, the expression's very, gone. Yeah, a lot of it, most yeah. of it. So man, it's, it's now we. You mentioned something about going to this uh, rave, and that made me reminded me before we started. You said you wanted to make sure and send some love to the Canafest or yes, something. So yes. I'm going to give you a chance to yeah to do um, that. So it. I feel like I'm going to butcher their last name, but shout out to um, oh geez, and now I'm forgetting one of them. Uh oh. <laughs> Oh, Dave and Chuck Verabayoff. I think that's okay. how you say it. Shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for having me on the 2018 Canifest uh, roster. That was a super cool experience. Had a blast there. Uh, let's get me on for 2020, though. I think it'd be a, I think it'd be a good step. Yeah, but Dave is... is sorry, Chuck owns the Canifest uh, franchise, and um, but Dave is his brother, and he um, owns, like... Did you see that... Uh, Gold Bay, Gold Bay Pond on Division. Yeah. He owned that, and he also owns a gold mine. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's incredible. And, and, like, he posts pictures of, like, the, the, the specimens that he digs up and everything, and it's just so cool. Um, though I felt like an idiot. He was picking me up to go somewhere, and I'm like, so, so Dave, being so involved with gold, why are you wearing a silver watch? He's like, that's a platinum Rolex. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> 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 my bad. <laughs> Put me in my place real quick. Yeah, I know. But shout out to you guys. Thank you for all the love you showed me, and thanks for giving me an experience I'm never for gonna forget. Cause I got to, you know, I was in Portland at the time. Flew in, drove up. Shout out to Sienna, who was also my ride here. That was um, in Canada. Yeah, was we, it? We, BC? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Grand Forks, British Columbia. Mm. And uh, yeah, got to go up there. Got to struggle with uh, the border for a second, cause they're like, "Wait, you have merchandise on you?" I'm like, 
Yeah, you, know, you got to fill out this form. Right. But they were, they were lenient on it at that time. They were kind of like, okay, if this is your first time, you didn't know. Um, so, but yeah, it was, it was Now you know next chance. time you yeah. don't mention the merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, there's nothing in my bar. <laughs> yeah, it was just a super cool experience, and it made me feel like a real professional musician getting to, you know, travel, yeah, yeah. be paid to play on stage for a lot of people as well as opening up for some real famous acts. Like, right, right. It is definitely a good thing to have on my musical yeah, resume. Yeah, So thank you for reminding me about yeah. that. Yeah, I can't believe that. I spaced the name for a second, though. So sorry if you watched this. That's fine. <laughs> Seems doubtful. Uh, you never know. Don't want to now watch that you're on here, maybe people start watching. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> but there's only 17 million people watching. Yeah, I might have, I might have lied. There's only 16 million. You know what? That's better than 1 million. <laughs> Hell, 1 million would be good. What am I saying? What am I saying? <laughs> so I'm still blown away that, with that beatboxing. I, I just, I don't... I mean, clearly you must have started slower and with basic yeah. sounds, like basic sort of the Boots and Cats kind of stuff. It, it was more so, so like there was that Did one you sound. read about like specifically ways to do it or just kind of do it by emulating? Like, YouTube is an untapped potential well, for knowledge yeah, for everything. Right. Everything that I've taught myself is essentially off of YouTube. But there was a beatboxer named Tight, T-Y-T-E. He had the most awkward close-ups of his face in, faces in his videos. But he taught you how to do your... And then back then I used to go... But then I realized on the other side it sounded like... So it sounded more knocky, sounded like a rim shot. Yeah. So I go, and so that. But I realize that there's a difference between that kind of beatboxing, and then there's like the power beatboxing, which is like, because that you can't hum behind. The other things, I can go like, right, 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 because it's like, yeah. So like that, it allows you to like have the other airflow going. The other things are like just like, I don't know if this would be a good way to explain it, but it's like stationary mouth sound. No, that wouldn't make sense. I, I don't know how to really put right, it. Right, right. There's a difference between, you know, it's just there's more power. Um, and so I just essentially developed in like beatboxing, coming up with little routines, hearing, like my favorite beatboxer ever, his name is Roxer Loops. And he actually follows me on Instagram and everything. Super cool. Um, a lot of my, my style is influenced off of him. Okay. And just listening to them. And one of the cool things is <clears throat> with beatboxing, with experience comes, you can hear something and be like, oh, I know how they're doing that. There's some things that are just like, wait a second. Right, there's but always like, somebody pushing the envelope. Yeah. Exactly. And it shows you what's possible with the voice. Yeah, yeah. You can talk like a robot. You can, like, you know, the, like the monks who do that throw singing? Yeah, yeah. And then if I add the bass sound. Oh, you're getting, yeah, you got the harmonic. Dude. That's so badass, man. <laughs> yeah. So there's just, but there was a beatboxer named Big Ben who did this whistle drop that just blew my mind. Like right when dubstep was getting, he had this like build up and he went into the, so like most people go like, but he went, yeah. And I was like, right, right, okay, right. well, I can already whistle like that. Yeah, 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 now I just yeah. gotta add the other sound. So like, you can you can piece it together. You can figure out right, stuff, right. and it just comes with experience with it. Right. But there's some technologically technologically technical English, um, very very difficult things that just still go over my head that I'm looking right, at right. and I'm like, huh? Yeah, I liked when you did the reverse. Oh yeah, like that was cool sound. <laughs> It's just it's like vocal manipulation. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's you know, some people who are really into beatbox don't even call themselves a beatbox, they call themselves a vocal percussionist. Right, right. Like Roxer Loops right. calls himself a vocal percussionist because his sounds are just so crisp. Like his right. one shot, like it's like <coughs> sound, just like <coughs> it just sounds like <coughs> like he he's like I just I don't even think no matter how it's like a different level. Yeah. It, it yeah. is. It's just you know and He's not the best beatboxer in the world by like the the ranking standards and like competition <laughs> stuff. But when I listen to him, just the clarity, the crispness, the the sheer like time you can tell he's put in. Yeah. It's just it's just that's what's always kept him at my number one right, spot right. of beatboxer, my inspiration for it. So yeah, 
but uh, it's so fun and it's definitely a cool party trick yeah people never expect it and i had like my little m m moment when i was younger i was at a rap show and they were freestyling and my friend jeff was like hey go freestyling i don't freestyle like right, i right, can right. do it and every once in a while i have those really killer ones but i'm not consistent by any means but they pushed me and i was like all right i'm gonna go do this and i was like maybe like five eight, eight at this time i was like at that time heavy enough to where i looked like I was a new Balumba, and I'm just like I had long hair, and yeah. I'm wearing a sweatshirt, and I go up and I tap this guy, and he looks at me, he goes, "No, man," and I was like, "What? Give me the mic, I'm good." And he gives it, he's like, "Whatever," and walks off, and it was the perfect time because the guy goes, he's like, "Play the next beat," and the and the guy actually made him, um, I can't think of his name. Oh, that sucked. He's like such a close friend. How did, how does that happen? Um, he was the sound guy for the Hop. This okay. was at the Hop, and um. I can see his face, but I can't think of his name. I cannot yeah. believe that. Um, sorry. <laughs> I do that all the time, man. Um, he goes, uh, that's the last beat on there. And I just started beatboxing. And the crowd went wild. And they followed me outside afterwards into the little courtyard thing that was there. And I was beatboxing for them and everything. That's uh, yeah. that must have been it's, amazing. It's the party trick of a life. Right, right, right. People just are just like, wait, huh? Right. Yeah, I love it. Well, because, you know, I think for a lot of people, you know, you're just, you're some dude, right? Yeah. And, and if some dude comes up and is like, yeah, I know how to beatbox, everyone has an expectation, right? It's like, oh, yeah, they, yeah me they too, buddy. Cats. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, and even that's enough. You can do something fun with it. But, like, people just, they're always, okay, I get it. You know? Right, it's, right. There's, there's just, you, again, especially with beatboxing, that's something you get. In, you get out what you put in. Right, right. Especially that. You know, because, like, I... Yeah, because he's very technical. Yeah. In terms of like learning the embouchure of the mouth. Yeah, and like you're, you're there's so much like, okay, if I'm gonna do this sound, I need to transition to have my tongue here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like to go like, like the, the phrase that I'm about to do something I only recently learned how to do. It's like going like, and then that's like a lot going right, on. Right, right. There's definitely I, like I, a like, like oh, it'd be so cool to have like an X-ray going like. Like watching like an fMRI where you can see that in real yeah. action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, it would be so interesting. Um, but like, I don't know if this is 100% accurate to say, but I feel like my mouth muscles and stuff are probably stronger than somebody who doesn't beatbox. Well, clearly, yeah. You know, because it's yeah, like, that you know, sense. working out. Right. It's like, I can, like, one of the stuff I can do is... Like, oh, yeah, like yeah, Mario yeah. and like, yeah. like that's slapping my tongue against the bottom of my mouth. Somebody, like, that's a really easy sound to do, but you have to be able to, like, I can probably keep my tongue slapping the, the bottom of my mouth to create that sound a lot longer than somebody who's just learning this sound. So, like, yeah, it's but all... But you make cool. a lady's <laughs> <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, I, I was there live cuts you can do? <laughs> <laughs> no edits. <laughs> um, but I feel like that probably also helps, like, that... that the, the nimbleness of that helps with the fast rapping too because it's all yeah. you know there's like because like I just I mean I, I couldn't just do that but I couldn't the thing talk there's, that there's, fast. there's some yeah. tricks to it like for example there's there's a line out of its old Twister song back when it used to be called Mr. Tongue Twister the line goes breaking them up and I'm making them take in the smell of the funk I be kicking up in them but then I'm gonna give them a lick of my lyrical lollipop I'm gonna bring them bring them up into my doctrine when you say that fast breaking them up for Pick it up and I begin to take it smell of the funk. I be kicking it in, but then I'm gonna give him a lick of it with the lollipop. I'm gonna bring him up into my doctrine. Like those words just roll off your tongue. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's definitely yeah. like a they, there's a similar sound to yeah. the syllable. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, like yeah. saying like, what am I gonna be able to get? What am I gonna be able to get? Right, what right. Be, like, yeah, so, like where there's certain things that wouldn't work. Yeah, like yeah, S's yeah. Right, are right. a pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Tech Nine even has a thing where he does something with a bunch of S's, and it's not like fast, like flow like that, but you can just tell it's super, super technical. Like one of the things that I picked up with him that I like to throw in is. Um, a whole line with this, the the words all starting with the same le letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I have a, a line in one of my uh, songs called Why, and I go, um, pester and pest, petty people picking pointless perfection, peaking polymorphism, paper puppets, post and prophetic persuasion. Right, and the whole right, line right. is about people thinking that they are just like uh, prophetic with their, their the likes they get on selfies and stuff like that. It's like a, their prophetic persuasion. Right, you know, right. they're, they're, they're posting this false image. And like, so yeah, I, I get inspiration of that. Like it's super cool that, man, it, it's so cool what you can take and develop in your own from your peers yeah, and other yeah, yeah. musicians. 
that's just it's like a it's like a collective of knowledge right, right. and that's the that's cool thing people sharing their music you can always take from it and right not right. like a, a stealing way but you can always apply it and develop sort of, yourself. Right? like what was yeah, that famous quote well, like good artists borrow uh, great artists steal, steal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it's it's there's there's so much you can learn oh you, yeah you never know everything <laughs> never no i mean i mean i'm almost 50 years old and i still all hear somebody you know, like i remember the first time i heard like bonnie bear you know, oh man. <laughs> you probably know that song Skinny Love that was like kind of big. Wait. Come did, on, Skinny oh, Love. Oh, uh, doesn't Ed Sheeran do a cover of that or something? Maybe. Uh, maybe maybe uh, not. Maybe he has something that sounds. Anyway, great songwriter. Yeah. But you know, just like when I first discovered him, it was like, like, oh man, it kind of reinvigorates you. Like, oh, I want to. And then you start yeah. writing songs yeah. that are kind of, you know, not like copying it, but you're like, starting to take little elements of exactly. what they do exactly. and then like bringing it into what you do and, and that's what i was talking about earlier with the the first song i played when i was warming up uh not not the walk the world song yeah, yeah. but um like clinton kane is the guy who uh made the song called this is what no it's this is what a toxic relationship feels like is what the name of the song was and i actually i'll send you a link to it later because it's just it's very beautiful his the way he enunciates some of his words kind of keeps you wanting to listen as well and it's just you can relate to it. Yeah, it yeah. It's you, and you're like, oh, damn. And, but the chords just, yeah. they, they laid out the, the the landscape for that song. Right. And that's what I was saying is, like, I took those chords, rearranged some of the chords, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. order, and I wrote my own songs with them. Right. That's awesome. Well, you know, that's, that's I often, when, I'm, when I talk to people who are just brand new to songwriting, mm -hmm. I often recommend that. Like, what's a song that you love? Mm -hmm. Learn the chords, and then write your own melody yeah, and lyrics, lyrics to it. That's perfect. Because... Honestly, you're not going to come up with a unique chord progression. No. Every chord progression that exists, it already exists. Yeah, exactly. Like there is no chord progression that yeah. you're going to come up with mm -hmm. that hasn't been done before. Yeah. It's all about what you do with it. Yeah. So take one that you already like and, it's and then just write on it. For, mm -hmm. There's only so much you can do for casual listeners to enjoy it too. Because if you start right. getting into weird music right, stuff, right. then people aren't going to understand it. Yeah, like it yeah. might make sense music theory wise, but it might it, it doesn't right. necessarily mean it's going to sound right. Right. Like, I watched some video about like it was like the ugliest chord progression you can do, and it's like just this bing, bing, right, bing, just bing, like really but, it, but it works. Right. But it right, works, right, right. and it's like okay, but yeah. So like yeah, you know, you just take take right. what you like, apply it, write about what you've experienced or what you want to write about. Right. Right. Be creative. Make your own things. Who cares if you're using the same chords as this popular song at that moment? Right. You know? It, right. It's all about Because what I guarantee you there's like that popular song is using the same chord progression <laughs> as fifty other popular yeah. songs over the last fifty years. Exactly. You know? Yeah, I don't even actually like so you know theory like crazy then, yeah. Mm, a little bit. Okay. So I never studied it super formally, but I have a lot of it in, in my okay. head. So like doing something that's just two notes. What, what what would that be called in like guitar like like because it's you're only playing well I guess you're still playing more than those two notes but or it'd be here anyways but like going right. are those octaves that you're doing with that I mean there's more than an octave in there yeah okay um, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Like, like what is that called? You mean? Yeah, like, is there like a name for pl that style of playing? Like oh yeah, that I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Cause I know what you're. I don't. I can't. Cause it's so much different. I, than, I can't do that. That jun da da. Yeah, it's a, it's a pattern I haven't figured out yet. I. I it's weird how like when you and you taught yourself to play, right? Yeah, and I did too, and and. When you teach yourself, one of the downsides of teaching yourself is that you can you can learn bad habits, right? right? You know, like like so when I taught myself to play, I I always like I played my D major chord like this, really instead of like this, which is the more proper way to do it. And this way makes way more sense because you can do a lot more. Wait, see, that's D major. Isn't this D? Whoa. Yeah, I'm I mean, also a half step but down. you can play it. You can play it any way you want, but. But, yeah, I've never seen him play. But like I that, always just so... would stick my because I first started playing by oh, playing bar chords. Oh, okay, I see. What so you're I'm doing. just yeah. barring the top three yeah, and then sticking my middle finger there. Okay. That but makes that makes it harder to do any kind of modulating, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's better to have three fingers. Exactly. Yeah. And but then my my picking style on my right hand, you know, I taught myself as well, and I only use like these three fingers. Yeah. And and that's all I can do. Yeah. Um, but like. For example, my son, he taught himself to play the guitar. Yeah. And he's like, 
like you, he's he was a massive woodshedder. You know, he when he decided he was going to learn stuff, he just sat so in his room for yeah. for five hours a day, just playing the piano, playing the guitar. Ah. And uh, that's probably a good feeling, though. So oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's that's amazing. Yeah. But he, he, we were up in the kitchen. This was a number of years ago, and he was just like he's always like just kind of strumming around on the guitar. And he was playing this picking, this finger picking. And I was like, God, that sounds amazing. Like, how are you yeah. doing that? And then I looked closely, and he was using like. Yeah. All five fingers, like like a classical player, well, you know, just like. Yeah. But he had just taught himself, and I was like, "That's just what you're bringing by." Like well, I taught myself, it's like three exactly. fingers, yeah. and then yeah. he's like, you know, twenty points of IQ ahead of me. So he's like <laughs> using all five. Of them. That's funny. Yeah, my brother. Uh, I don't think I mean, he might use his pinky a little bit. I use four mainly. That's why my nails are ridiculous. And I yeah, usually yeah. have a acrylic on my pointer finger because my nail is just gone. When you and can you actually pick it with the with your nail? Uh, yeah, for the that's like, like a classical. It's, kind it's of almost thing like also. a half and half at times. Like so, it depends. Like if I'm doing. Right, because you don't like, always want that yeah, the sharpness. The sharpness, that, exactly. Yeah. Like this is with my nail, without a doubt. But like, there's other things that I find myself like just the way it lays. But like, because if I use my thumb like fully, it would be like, it's like real. It's more twangy almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very different sound. Yeah. But it's nice to have that option. See, yeah. Like I don't have that. It's all just gonna be fingers, so it's yeah. always gonna be that softer. Yeah. yeah. I never, I never developed calluses on my my right hand. It's so yeah. I just, I prefer to have my nails. And people are always like, "That's so gross." I'm like, "Why is it gross? It's my nails." But on top of that, like, you wouldn't say if I was a girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's 2019. I can be whatever I want to right. be, right? So no, but I, uh, you know, I file them. I like try to keep them at like a good length and everything. Typically, they end up getting longer than I should keep them. But I just don't feel like clipping them and then filing them right, out. Right, right, right. Um, but you know, people always say, "Well, why don't you use the the plastic picks?" And I say, "Imagine." Taking your muscle memory and moving it half a centimeter. Yeah, yeah. That, that might not seem like a lot, but when you're hitting a string, right, you have to retrain yourself. Well, that's, that's it. I mean, when I've tried to play with with my nails, or like I was using, like you know those um, those metal picks that people yeah. use to exactly to yeah. emulate it. Yeah. Uh, it was. It's a different. It's the muscle memory is like I'm so used to using a pick or the way or my fingers and the way you position, you position it. it yeah. Everything has to be relearned. I've noticed when you use those, you're keeping your thumb. Uh, horizontal to the strings rather than angled into it and like that's just that's just so weird right I can't right do it. right I, I'm yeah, set my ways with yeah. this I don't mind yeah. it I like it it's funny too because I can right. weird people out and like I said I like <laughs> off, you know I'll, I don't I, like I'll I'll bring it up I'll be like hey <laughs> look at this <laughs> or like a girl I'll just have her nails on I'll be like oh I like those you like mine and they'll be like uh you know okay I'm so, like, okay weirdo get away from me <laughs> so but yeah it, it all just ties in like technique too though is really interesting there's you know you have you can't just say like i play guitar it's like well, what kind do you do like there's people who play cr crazy lead stuff or jazz right right, like, right i i don't know lead and that's probably due to the yeah. lack of theory knowledge because i don't know where i can go on the fret and, and what you're what is what is it you're using it as a tool for the guitar true yeah you know like yeah same here i never developed any lead playing yeah because the play guitar, guitar is backing for my it's a different instrument yeah, lead guitar has different instruments. Yeah, definitely. And I wouldn't mind getting yeah. like an electric and like learning some stuff because I feel like it could add a really cool, uh, like, like I don't know, variation to my song. Yeah, yeah. And fill it up more. But you know what? You know what I've been doing recently because I I just I get bored of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you never get bored of yourself. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Like when you're like playing the same songs. Yeah. And you're doing all these gigs and then yeah. by the you know. Gig number twenty, you're like, oh, this here's song. this blah, next song's blah, 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 called. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to play this anymore. Right. <laughs> I've always had so much respect for when bands and they go on tour and you're playing the same songs for like, yeah. you know, forty days in a row, yeah. and how you can emote on that fortieth day the same way you did on the first, where you're yeah. like, I really That's feel cool. this song, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, exactly. and inside you're like, I'm not feeling this at all. <laughs> <laughs> Please take this pain away. Because I've been there, and it is, <laughs> yeah. it's hard. It's hard to maintain that. But, Absolutely. Um, it's cool though. It just shows you like people, you know, professionalism. Right. And like, the thing like, is, it's usually like it's usually up until the moment you actually start playing it. It's like yeah. that, like oh. Yeah. And then, then you, you start playing it. It's like okay, I'm still it there. It opens that feeling. Right. Exactly. Right. You know, like uh, Paramore, another band I really like. Haley Williams, incredible vocalist. They during a show said, "This is the last time we're playing this song, ever." And they don't play it. It's the misery business. The song that got them famous. Uh, they don't play it live anymore. Right, play it? right. I know but, some bands that have done that where they just yeah. don't play that that big hit anymore. Yeah, and you know that I feel like that can be cool, but it's you have to be careful if you're doing that, and that's the only reason why you're famous. Right. But they're they're diverse enough and talented enough that they've had right. plenty of songs that are still. Like, and you know that's life is long. You yeah. know, I mean, the Rolling Stones when they you know back in the seventies they were you know they were like, you know they all had that young person yeah. rock and roll attitude. It was like yeah. well you know. 
you just got to keep on moving. You got to keep doing new things. And yeah. what are they doing now? They're set in their seventies and they're still playing exactly. "Start Me Up," and I think there's no satisfaction. Imagine yeah. playing a song yeah. for sixty years yeah. or fifty years yeah. and still playing that song. Like, boy, talk about commitment to yeah. the to the moment. I think know? one thing that definitely can play a part in uh, getting away from that is if you're a band that changes their sound frequency. Yes, like yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's a metal man called Bring Me the Horizon. Who used to be just, you know, like just straight up screaming, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like I think he even like killed his voice. I don't mm, know if he had like certain notes or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think nodule nodes or whatever. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I always wondered about that with those screaming oh, yeah. metal guys. If, you, if you're screaming from your throat, you're gonna screw up your voice because yeah, your yeah. vocal cords are going. Yeah. yeah. But like, if you're doing it from your diaphragm, I guess it can be a lot less damaging. Right. That's right. some technical stuff. That is very technical. But yeah. they went from like deathcore into more like. Uh, melodic stuff into their music, m more melody vocally, into more clean singing, into now they're almost pop. Right. And that's, and people, the elitists hate it. Right. But I right. think that's amazing. No, it's they awesome. They are so musically inclined and so in sync with each other that they're able to keep themselves relevant and develop their sound into, into 2019 and be able to be like, yeah, we're still making music and we're making right. music we like. Right. You know? Right. It, I think that's super cool. That's yeah. Super that's one of the things I've always admired about um, Neil Young. Mm -hmm. You know, he he became famous writing, you know, classic mm -hmm. acoustic singer-songwriter songs. And then, but his throughout his entire career, he has always just done whatever he wanted. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I want to do a doo-wop album. Yeah. Do a doo-wop album, do a doo -wop you know, album. and it just gives zero shits. I think that's a great, I really admire that, you it, know. And that's cool, yeah. Other people are unapologetically themselves. Right, and musically. Right. Uh, who is it that did? They never wrote a song off of the, the same. They wrote every song in the same chord progression their entire career. And they're an older <laughs> artist. I can't remember who it is though. It may have been like a blues artist. Right. But every song was the same progression. Right. Just how you deliver it, the melody going right, over right. it, that shows you like it doesn't matter what you're playing if you right, feel it. Right. Right. I guess he really felt that chord right. progression. Or <laughs> like bands like Boston, they were like that. Mm. Um, more than a feeling. You know no, I song? can't say I've heard that one either. Man, you're so I know young. Boston, I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's but they had, like every song with like this formula. Yeah, that sounds almost exactly the same. Yeah. You know? But it just shows you what you can do with so little in yeah. music. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, you blues. Know. You mentioned blues. Blues is the perfect example of that. Yeah. Because blues is a very defined structure, right? Mm. Like a twelve-bar blues is, you know, it, it's it's pre predictable so that. You know, if you were like, this song is a 12-bar blues song, I can pick up my guitar and play along with you. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's cool too, I know what it's going to be. And, but that, and that takes, then that, then that sort of like, it's kind of like rapping in a way where it's like the, the form almost becomes irrelevant. It's all about the delivery mm -hmm. on top of it. Yeah. Right? Like the blues form itself, it's very predictable. Everybody mm -hmm. knows it. But yeah. still love blues because what am I going to do with the lyrics? What am I going to do with the delivery? Yeah. How am I going to... Approach it on the Instagram. Exactly. You know, exactly. So. That's the that, that's cool thing. Like I like about rap is that people are like, well, you're just you're just rhyming over beat. Well, no, because there's not only is there your you know your delivery, your lyrical content, your ability to rap, you know, different speeds, but there's like the way you choose to intensify your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, emphasize something. You know, your ad libs. That's huge in rap music. The yeah going on in the background that really carries the song into something. Right, right, you know? right. It's just, and that's super cool. And you hear that a lot in the mainstream stuff. There's a lot of songs that are just really driven by the ad libs, like the ad lib games that they call right, it. Right, right, right. It's like, it's cool. It's just, I love, I love seeing where things develop. I wonder where it's gonna be in even five years. Right, right. It's always constantly evolving. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Well, you know what? We've been talking like so much, and you've yeah. only played with one song and it doesn't be boxing. So we want to do another song. <laughs> okay, for sure, yeah. But now um, you just only wanted to do a few, so this is good that we've been talking. But yeah, I've been really out of practice. I just. I've, I've been in that mode where the hip-hop and R&B stuff has been just more so my interest. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's still nice to get out and just give me an excuse to pick up my guitar again. So right, uh, hopefully right, I right. will find some more inspiration. So thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah. appreciate it. Um, this next song is called... Um, I don't know what I actually called this song. Let me uh, look at... Oh, there goes that. I think my number one fan is uh, watching right now. Let's see. Try to see... Oh. Oh no, couldn't find it. Um, but yeah, shout out to uh, Wanda. Thank you for always being such a great supporter. It's actually my ex's grandma. <laughs> but she is just, 
so cool. Before I had my t-shirts made, she steam pressed a um, the the cover of my. Uh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. Did, um, you came out this whole yeah. time. I just it was like, oh, there's a t-shirt, but. That's well, cool. I guess I need to get a different design. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, she she took my EP cover and put it on shirts, and she Aww. comes into my show. And she goes, "Your fan club has arrived." <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, like, shout out to you, Wanda. Thank you so much for all the love and support, and just being such a great person in in my life. Like, you're you're awesome. So, hopefully, I I'll, I'll try to like, send her. She told me she couldn't find the, oh. the stream link because an idiot didn't share it. Um, but. I hope in the future maybe I can come back again and we can uh, set that up so I can actually share it so right, people will right. find it. I just well, didn't think I will it. also, I'll let you know when I put it on YouTube and you, oh, okay, can, you can, can share, share that too. too yeah, it's, I mean, it is a live stream, but it's also, you know, yeah. people could just go watch it. It wouldn't make much difference. Yeah. Okay, yeah, true that. But then I can't talk to them live. That's true. No, let me see. What did I name this song? Sorry, guys. Uh, Either it's called Voices in the Walls, or I was taking because that whole "This is what blank feels like" thing is becoming popular. Um, so I did have two songs that had like alternative titles. Um, I don't remember what I called this one, but it goes like this. Are those Tim's jalapeno chips down there? I think so, but they're pretty old. Uh, I'm just saying, like, good choice. Yeah. <laughs> my mind. 
nice. I like ending it there too, where it's not right on the, the yeah, you know, like on the one there. The, yeah, it. I, I I don't usually use a lot of harmonic stuff, so I I struggle with them sometimes. It's weird. Like I'll think I'm on it, but then I like, it's like yeah, yeah, not quite right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think it's just it's such like a cool. I feel like recording that and having the reverb on the guitar just like <laughs> right, right. It's gonna be a cool way to end the song. Yeah. But yeah, that that song that was like a big insight to more like recent about I'm really 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 conscious of the amount of times I've said like during this and it's like eating at me I'm like what damn it <laughs> <laughs> it's never good to why, focus on why those can't things. I speak without saying that word it's very frustrating and I'm trying very difficult not to say it but every time I get excited and I start talking I keep throwing it in there I feel like now times. you need to write a rap song <laughs> that uses that like yeah. all the time like like like, like totally. I think I like totally. You should like totally. Do I that. like totally. <laughs> Valley Girl stuff. <laughs> Call it Valley Girl. <laughs> oh, jeez. Actually, when I first started writing songs, I could never finish one and uh, rap. And I had a rap song that I had started, and the joke was gonna be that it was just gonna cut off mid verse. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the song was about how I never wrote finish. to finish songs. Yeah. So I thought that would have been hilarious to do. Unfortunately, I think that's on some random hard drive that's. Yeah, who knows where that is. But that is a good idea. It's just kind of funny, though. Like, like mid-word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're going <gonna, laughs> <we're gonna, laughs> to... Everyone's waiting is like, all right, wait for the next part coming. coming? Yeah. <laughs> New song <starts>. New song. <laughs> That's perfect. A one-song EP. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you charge less than 99 cents? Because I feel like I shouldn't charge right. less than a whole song. Uh, well, you remember when, uh, when Spotify first was like getting big there was like there were like some really smart people that were like gaming it by like there was a band that um uh, i don't know if it was a band or just a person but mm -hmm. had like it was like a whole album but there was all silence you know it was just it was just like hmm. a couple minutes of no but it was like you know it was a sound file but uh -huh. there was no sound in it huh and then they just told, told people like put it on in the background mm -hmm. there's no nothing there but we're going to generate. That's and they crazy. were actually making money. Wow. You know, off of streaming. And that's then Spotify changed their rules. Yeah, to, I bet. Yeah, you know, like, because <laughs> people were doing that. That's funny. Like, there's people always find people. A way yeah, people always find a way. Clever, clever, clever. Yeah. And that, that's one of the things, like, Spotify or any app that's getting popular. If you get onto there before it gets big and you find how to really work that system, you can either, one, blow up as a musician, right. or two, get yourself a good following. I guess that's still kind of tied into blowing up, but you see people who are only famous on Instagram. They have hundreds of thousands of followers verified and everything, but they don't do anything else, but they're getting paid to post videos on Instagram. There's right, a right. fitness girl who makes $25,000 a post. Isn't that, isn't that insane? I'd be like, here's a new selfie of you guys. Here's, right, <laughs> here's right. my cereal. <laughs> hey, look at this cat. No, I don't, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't It's a guy. weird it's culture. The whole Insta culture is odd to me. Like, I just don't yeah. get it. But you know what? That, that yeah. The way you said that kind of answers it, though. We are a race who is, or a race, or, uh, like humankind, or I don't know. How we're saying. a race. Yeah, we're, like, we are, we want instant gratification. Right. And right. that's not how it should be. Right. And Instagram. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Instant. instant. You're yeah. getting... You know, they, it's studies it's that have dopamine shown, feeds, exactly. Right? Studies yeah. have shown a like releases dopamine in your yeah. brain, and that's sad because then there are people who are depressed because they're not yeah. getting likes. And right. social media is not good for you. No, it it's isn't. Not. It isn't. The because first it, thing I do is yeah. I, when I wake up, out of sleep is where's my phone? Right. And I'll check all my admit posts. That. Yeah. This, I'll post. Yeah. I'll post something on Instagram, and then I'll uh, not. I'll close it so that when I open it, it'll be like. 40 new likes, and I'll be like, oh, people yeah, yeah, like yeah. me. Like, that's not healthy. No, it isn't. I shouldn't it do isn't. that. And I really, like, this summer, I really want to, like, I'm not a big camper. I've only gone a few times in my life, so my dad is, like, paranoid about wildlife. He's like, you don't go camping unless you have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But at the same time, we don't have guns. Right, right. right. <laughs> or maybe we do. Mm. Just kidding. Don't break into my house. Um, uh, and so I've only gone a few times, and I want to do, like, a week long camp trip. I know that's not a long time for some people. For me, it would be. Yeah. I'm just, I turn my phone off. The only time it's used is in case of an emergency. I have to occupy my mind. Like, I like fishing. Mm -hmm. I like doing stuff, but and I, maybe I'd get creative with my instrument. But I just, I am so addicted to social media. It's a vicious I, it is. cycle because once you start, like, like now I still use Facebook, but like I hardly ever post on Facebook. Yeah. And that is healthier for me. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like, 
I, I just do use it to keep up with people that I know yeah. or loved ones. You know, loved ones. certain yeah. like like I'm a massage therapist, so I on some massage therapy forums. Yeah. You know, but I just don't really post stuff on there because yeah, you just get caught up in that game of like. Oh, like nobody even yeah. read what I read. Exactly. What's the and then, point? Yeah. Of so I, I, I will find myself <laughs> thinking. I will find myself thinking. What can I post that's funny? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What can I post? Not just like what can I share with my friends that I find uh, entertaining like, in person or on a phone call or something. It's like no, I want people. I want my whole friends list to see this. Right. I want them to like right. it. I want them to share it, and I want them to right. tell me how funny I am. Like it's it's right. it's all right. like, like I said with that line with all the peas. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like it's like we. We're, we play characters behind our faces. Absolutely. We, well, yeah. You know, we were just actually upstairs talking to my wife and her brother about this a couple hours ago, mm. which is like this, you know, there's this, this kind of, everyone's, everyone's like lying on, on social mm. media. Right? Oh, you're it's like so great. <laughs> you know, so, so it, it's, it's, it, it really is, it, it can be such a depressing yeah. place for someone who's already kind of depressed because yeah. it's like. You're looking, it's like, and all my friends are, like, living these amazing yeah. lives because yeah. they're like, oh, we're going to parties. Here we are in Europe. We're drinking our wine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like yeah. we're all posting our best selves. Yeah. And then inside we're like, everyone else is so amazing, yeah. and I'm having to lie. Yeah. But everyone's lying. Yeah. 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 You they, know, they, and they, it's they, like they, this big circle jerk exactly, of, like, exactly. you know, depressed people feeling like they're the only ones that are mm -hmm. depressed, and everyone else is, yeah. like, having these amazing experiences. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not posting yeah. about the huge, almost relationship-ending argument they just had right. 30 minutes right. before they had right. that wine, you know? Like, it's... it's like, man, my hemorrhoids were really active yeah. this morning. I mean, there's some people that do post like that. I'm not like actually that. seated in this photo. I've been squatting. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you, you get to put on a complete different... Facebook. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. put on your whatever you want to display, you can portray that you are someone you're entirely not. Hell, make a new Facebook account with a different name. Don't right. <laughs> move to a different city. You're someone new. Right. You know, you, you have the power with social media to do whatever you want. But unfortunately, it's just, it's being proven more and more that the more, the yeah. deeper we're getting into it, especially the newer generations, like they're being raised on it. That's right. not healthy. No, it isn't. I think it, and it feeds the ego. And to me, ego is kind of like, uh, it's a different than like when I say ego, I'm not talking about like like being a, 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 an entertainer. Yeah. Uh, it takes ego, but it's not, you know. There's that's that's different than being it's like dangerous like, or focused negative on ego. the ego. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like the world revolves around me. Yeah, ego. yeah. And that's what social media does. It mm -hmm. kind of teaches us to to think in terms of like, uh, you know, the world mm -hmm. is is this bubble. Yeah. You know, around me. Yeah. I'm the center of the universe. Yeah. 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 I it, think that's dangerous. It's absolutely dangerous. And we're, more apps are being made, more things. And the thing is, it's like people, what people really need to realize is I don't care how many friends you have on Facebook, you're not socializing. Right. And it's making people antisocial because they think, well, why? Right. Like, I've been at a party and thought, wow, I could be on the internet right now. You know? Like, right. th that's, that's, that's so bad. Like, right. get out there, right. talk, make connections, meet people. Right. Your happiness is going to be so much more. Right. Pick up an instrument, write songs, sing, perform. Exactly. Do, exactly. Be, do things. Connect. Really, yeah, connect. connect. And not an internet connection. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I yeah. am. No, you're not. <laughs> and I mean, and, and that's not to say that there are. I think for some people, like, I mean, it, you know, it, it, it's an amazing. Like, there's the good outweighs the bad. I think of of the internet ultimately because yeah. it is like the, you know, it's that is the future. Is yeah. That is information systems but um but yeah having some perspective on it and not just being like you know i mean there's some people i guess if you had like such a crushing kind of uh social anxiety yeah the internet could be a real blessing yeah to you, yeah you especially know? if you're doing something behind an avatar right and then you can right. do, you can design you can just be that's why people become furries or something yeah. right it's like yeah. i can i'm not myself yeah I can yeah just, i can be myself and then you find the people who I'm also have the same right things. Yeah. right so yeah there is beauty in the internet but it, it's a fine line it, it is it's, it's it like is. anything you have to have moderation right and people don't realize that i i spent you know i've spent eight hours at my seat looking down at the clock and going oh my god i have not right. stood up today right and then i stand up and my tailbone's bruised yeah, you know yeah, yeah. like yeah. i I, I, I'm a victim of it. You know, right. I grew up, a lot of my time is spent playing video games and or just RuneScape especially. And that's how I was making friends as a young kid. And, right. then, you know, I was, I was an active kid though. Like, I had a lot of friends in school, all that, but I loved my RuneScape. Right. And that's where I really taught myself to spell, type, read. Like, I do 136 words a minute. Like, 
that was a huge thing for me. Right, right. My social skills were, I feel, always more advanced. And perhaps, maybe that's what's developed me into being so social, sociable. Is that the word? Yeah. Because I was able to approach people on a video game with no yeah, yeah, yeah. hesitation. So it kind of translated to like, well, I can bond with this person. What's, what's right, the problem right, with it? Right. So, yeah, like, I, yeah, you have candy, I'll take it. Where, your dog's missing? Yeah, I'll come right, in your right. car with you, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, that big van? I'll yeah. get in there, no problem. <laughs> that doesn't look dangerous. <laughs> why, why is there so many knives on the floor? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but yeah, social media is a powerful tool, though, especially for promotion of music and stuff like that, if you know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love to, because, you know, like, my, my debut music video for um, More To Me, uh, with using Facebook's uh, promotion tools, it had 112,000 views. That wasn't free, right? but it's still, like, it, was, it wasn't like... You weren't paying for it, views, yeah, no. but I you were paying, paying for, for ads. Pr advertisements, yeah, yeah, yes, because yeah. some people, and it's really frustrating, don't know the difference. Yeah. And right, right. Because there are, like, I, I've called people out. I'm like, dude, you have, uh, like, 100,000 views, but why do you have 10 likes on your video? You know right. what I mean? Right. Like, that doesn't add up. Right. There's, there's a difference between using ad manager and buying fake views like so that was a cool way to do it but even then i didn't do it properly because right, right. i was targeting uh areas that were just outrageously expensive per view per like and everything like that so there's a lot that goes into it like yeah, seo yeah. optimization yeah, 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 yeah. all that stuff yeah. is like why does everything have to be so difficult but the number one thing that frustrates me about social media is algorithms you should not have to pay for people to see your posts if right, I post right. a song on my music page, all of my likes should see it. Right. But it doesn't. Right. Not a small fraction sees it. Right. And that's so dumb. Yeah. That's so dumb. Yeah. Yeah. And that was actually a kind of a more recent shift that they did. Yeah. Uh, just in the last few years where it was yeah. where they made it so that you're seeing less and less of, you know, and you're getting, they're it's like. It's targeted. It's targeted, yeah. right? You're seeing the people you interact with the most. Have you ever been talking to someone and you get on your phone and you have an ad for what you're just talking about? Yes. Although I've. I, it, it's kind of creepy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Facebook, chill. Right. Yeah, that's creamy. Yeah, it is you weird. Know, I feel like no, no, privacy's gone. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, this, we're going far afield from songwriting, but it'll be interesting to see what happens yeah, in the true. coming generations of, like, you know, I, I think our our understanding of what privacy means is going to have to radically shift yeah. in order for us to survive. You because, sign your privacy yeah. away every time you click I accept to the Yeah, of course. The things, all things you don't yeah. read. Yeah, you're, you're just scrolling by. You're probably like, text. we own your soul, uh, right. three fourths of your left right. foot. Like, well, then it's like, gonna you're like every few months there's people, it goes around, it's always like people my age or older. Mm -hmm. but they, where they're posting their thing on Facebook where they're like, I do not give Facebook permission. Yeah. To, you know, as if that, it's like, dude, when you signed up for Facebook, you gave away all of that. That always makes me laugh like, so hard. It means nothing. Yeah, when people message me like the chain, like Facebook's about right, to right. be a dollar to use, and I'm like, well, firstly, I'd be like, hell yeah, make it a dollar to use if they're going to get rid of the algorithm. get rid of all that bullshit. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. I'd be totally down yeah. for that. Yeah. Well, man, they become, I mean, they're already one of the most wealthiest companies ever, if right. not the most, or I guess Amazon's probably had. But like, no, think of it, just a dollar from all the users per month? Right. <laughs> well, there's, you know, like, you yeah. can solve so much with that money. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I have a question for you, though. Yes. Um, you said your songwriting is similar to mine, but do you have any key things that you find that are a lot different than what, I, what I've expressed that I do? Um, not really. And I mean, I mean, obviously, our songwriting isn't similar yeah, necessarily, no, at all, yeah. you know. But but the process is similar. And, and you know, usually, well, in the last few years, because I used to just write by, I'd have my guitar and a notebook, and mm -hmm. I would just play it. These days, I tend to like, once I get a chord change, I like I record it real quick mm -hmm. and then put it on loop, and okay. just put the earphones on, and. Um, Sometimes I'll do other stuff, like I might get on Facebook, or I might, you know, so you're just like, uh, okay. and and it's just playing in my ears okay. until it's just like, you know, and the whole time I'm kind of like humming melodies. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, the the part that really resonated for me was also it's like it's like that first line, mm -hmm. that first verse. That's what like sets that's what song. sets me going. Yeah. Um, and and just deciding what is the what. Because you, 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 any chord progression, you could you can do like a million different melodies over it. So yeah. it's like finding like, all right, where do I want to? What you were talking about with rapping too. It's mm -hmm. the same with writing lyrics. It's like, well, where do I want to 
yeah. come in. Like, you know, like when you first start writing songs, you're, you know, you, you're the, the basic, you're songwriting and you're doing your chords. Yeah. And then you're like, I was on yeah, down exactly. the street. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you're, your voice you're, is not, kind of following you're, your you're following something. along. And then it's later on, you might be like, I was on the, you know, like you're, yeah. you're, like you're coming in at a different spot. Yeah. Or those kinds of things that, that, because what is it that makes people pay attention in music? It's like, it's where you didn't do the predictable thing. Yeah. But it's not so far out that it's like, that it's well, I just went, yeah, exactly. which is unpredictable, yeah. but nobody wants to hear that. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, oh, I managed, it's like, oh, that's cool the way they came in. And I always notice that when I'm listening to music, it's like, oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't expect it. One thing I've always wanted to do in a song yeah. is a key change. Never done it. I feel like I need I, to have more knowledge to do you it. You know, I... It's hard to do without it being it's cheesy. It's really hard to make it not cheesy. Like, yeah. really hard. Yeah. So it'd be cool. <laughs> it to used to be like every song. Really? Like back in like the fifties, that was like the thing. Yeah. Like, you know, it was like we were like, third verse. Let's go up a whole step. You know? like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's cool though. It's an interesting thing to hear when it's done right. Yeah. But yeah. something I also want to uh, say is like when when people first start playing an instrument. It's like their voice is the guitar too. The way yeah, yeah. It. Then once you become more advanced and you're able to separate it, then you're really displaying. That's when you, yeah. And that's when it really gets fine tuned. That's when things start to click in. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's really cool. It, it's really fun noticing people's progression. Right. I'm, I, I'm sure you've seen like when I first started, I probably sound a hell of a lot better than I did because right, like, right. even when I look back at old videos, I think, wow. Yeah, yeah. Like even doing like a specific run, I'll be like, I really, really fine tuned that. Yeah, and things like that. It's it's so cool. Well, that's one thing about social media that I loved. I can look back and see how right, far I've come. Right. Speaking of which, I just got a year update. Or no, not year. It's been I don't know how many years now. You're going going away party for Gabe Knox. Oh wow! When I met. Uh, I think that's where I met Randy. No, it wouldn't have been. Who did I just meet there? Oh, I met Joe Cajon there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Randy <laughs> took us to the wrong house, knock on the door, and this guy answers with a flashlight in our face. Like, what do you want? And we're like, oh, sorry, wrong house. Oh, that was, yes, yeah, I remember. That was when they had party here. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then we drove to another place, and he's like, all right, that's it. And he's like, where's my iPhone? I can't find yeah. it. You go up. I go knock on the door, read the sign, and it's just, like, inside they had cellos. And right. so I was like, take your shoes off. Okay, I take my shoes oh, off. I remember I walk you told me that, yes. <laughs> I walk inside, I take my shoes off, and I go, how do you know Mary Ellen? And I look at him and I go, who? Who's Mary Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> I walked into someone's house party. If it didn't have like an elderly person's name, I probably would have went with it. Right, right. But I feel like maybe that was like a memorial thing. But I was like, damn it, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I took my shoes off. They were like, at least you were respectful. So naturally, being me, I had to go give everyone my card and then I left. Right, right. I never heard from any of them. But it was still <laughs> very funny. And I think about it. I tell people that story all the time. Like, I feel like you really had to be there. But at the same time, that just cracked me up so Right, much. right. Because I'm taking off my shoes. And like, so how do you know Mary Ellen? And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> nah. But that's just good timing for this interview. Right, right. It happened when I just got the uh, gear or... Three years, four years now, I think. Uh, right? Yeah. Um, notification memories thing. That's so, funny. Yeah. Uh, that, that was good. That was good. Uh, and man, Randy's over in Nashville. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's super cool. Doing a lot of writing and yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's great, you know, to see somebody uh, who's like out of their t you know twenties. Yeah. Still like pursuing. Yeah. I'm gonna do this thing, yeah. and that's awesome. Yeah, I got, I got to work with him. I, I did a studio sit-in for, or I wrote rap verses. His song, I Love You, Baby. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a, a verse and we recorded an Amplified Wax recording studio with Jimmy. And yeah, I, I got to write uh, verses. And then, see, that's cool. With songwriting, I was given a task and I had to do it. Kind of like the, how you were doing the song. Yeah, yeah, I never yeah. participated in those. I kind of wish I had. But um, he said he wanted me to write the verses kind of at the angle of like narrating being Cupid. And so I was like, all right. So the line is like, if you think about it, you know, you will be better in his arms, wearing his clothes of a size sweaters. You keep right, trying right. to fight the issues that you have inside, but in your mind, he's the one you're thinking of at night. Like, things like that. And it came together really cool. Such a weird song, but I love right, it. Right, right, right. It's so different than anything I'd ever been a part of or just heard. So I really, shout out to you, Randy. I hope you're doing good out there. I mean, you're probably not seeing this because right. right, we have 17 million viewers, but we made sure you weren't watching. That's uh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Plus, it's also... 11.30 in Nashville, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's probably in bed. Um, uh, 
Well, I was gonna. Have you ever, have you ever seen any uh, YouTube videos by a guy named Adam Neely? He's like a jazz musician. I think he's a bass player, but he he does a lot of like talks about music theory and and songwriting. Possibly, and, I can't and say for sure. Though. He did this talk that I watched. It was like a forty five minute like TED Talk kind of video um, about. So, my understanding of music, I've always understood that. So like rhythm and and melody or notes are related, right? Like so if you take a but this was the, just this kind of blew my mind, so I just want to give this to you because it's it such a cool idea yeah. if you haven't if you haven't experienced it before. So like you take a beat, right? Mm -hmm. Like that. And that's a rhythm, right? Yeah. Now you speed it up, the faster you get, eventually it becomes tone. Because like a tone oh, yeah. is a beat that's beating at a faster frequency. Yeah. So we talk about frequency, the higher the frequency, the higher the tone, right? Yeah. So like if you take a beat, just a standard beat, and you and you speed it up, it'll yeah. it'll be like Yeah. It'll, make, yeah, it'll yeah. become a tone. Now I understood that from a you know like a scientific perspective. Yeah. But it was really, really cool. And then he was saying how like polyrhythms are chords. So if you take Take a polyrhythm, like instead of just going doom doom doom, but you go like doom da 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 doom da da doom da da doom da da doom, and you speed it up, it'll be like a chord. It'll be like two tones. Wow! So like any rhythm that you think of, if you were able, if you were to speed it up to the point where it becomes tonal, yeah, it will be chords. And then just all right, and and I'm just I want to leave that with you to think about because it's a little bit mind blowing. Like what? The more you think about it, the crazier it is because you realize like. Just how connected, and since you do rap and this stuff, it kind of made. Me, I was thinking about it with you. It's like to think, of, just to, just something to think about. Like yeah. when you're doing like your beatboxing, yeah. and you think about like when you're doing a complex polyrhythm, like you're also doing like a really slowed down version of mm. a musical chord. And so yeah. polyrhythms that sound harmonious to us, yeah, like mm. that sound like they're like they're really regular, you mm. know. Like a yeah. basic rock beat, that's gonna be like a like a major chord or something, right? Mm. But a really off kilter beat, like when yeah. you see those rappers that do those like really crazy beats. Yeah, yeah. If you were to speed those up into tones, they would be more like dissonant tones. You know, I I totally yeah. hear what you're saying now because like if you there's there's funny videos on YouTube. It's like uh, Shrek, but every time the word ogre said it, it speeds up, right? It eventually goes into like a. Mm. Right, right, right. And like, obviously, that's not the same. But if 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 I hear a song and I think about it speeding up faster and faster and faster, it inevitably becomes one tone. Right, and right. I never thought. That and the whole idea of like polyrhythm is becoming chords is mm -hmm. really cool because I was thinking about that from a point of view of writing. You could do some really interesting experiments with that, mm -hmm. right? Like, what if you design the rhythm of your song such that if you were to speed it up to the frequency. It would be also the chord that you're using in the song. Just go way over my head, <laughs> right? Like, but that would be like, and, and it's the, the cool thing, and I love this kind of stuff because it's the kind of thing like nobody listening to your music would ever even be aware yeah, of that, yeah. but you would know. You'd exactly. be like, see that rhythm? Mm -hmm. That's also this chord. Yeah, it's like a lot. Oh, faster. I see what you're see saying. See what I'm saying? Yeah, that would be like, crazy. What is the what is the polyrhythm that makes a, a an A minor chord? Yeah. Right, yeah. and then have that be the rhythm oh, under it. It's just like a crazy idea. Yeah. Of it. Like that's maybe, like taking songwriting into science, like a whole level. weird. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> like, oh wow, I, that, it goes. That's crazy. It goes yeah, like yeah. Really deep into like you have to put like, some. What is into it? That. Like, what is music? It makes you think like, oh, what is what we think of rhythm and music as different things, yeah. but they're really they're the exact same thing. Yeah. One's just slower and one's faster. Like they are, it's literally the same thing. Yeah. Rhythm and, and, and notes. It's so cool how they play such a part yeah. in each other. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's fascinating. That is fascinating. So do you want to do one more song? It's totally up to you. Yeah, I, I'm down. I just gotta look at my song list. Cause we're getting, um, let's see, what are we at here? Oh, we're, we're, we're two hours in, so. Wow. This is a, we're, we're, we're two hours and ten minutes in, which is pretty awesome. No, I've, had, I've had a really good time. This has been a lot of fun. Me you too. Know, Maybe I it helped pull you out of your funk a little bit. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> you, know, it, I, you know, I have friends who are musicians, but I, I don't really sit down and talk about it. With right, you. You right. Know, you kind of just, hey, you want to try to write something? Sure. Yeah, music's yeah. cool. Yeah, music's <laughs> cool. Yeah, um, let's see. 
I, I, I mean, I have a selfish motivation for a lot of this too, because when I, and I talk to other people about songwriting, mm -hmm. I'm always learning stuff too, yeah. because we all have slightly different approaches. Yeah. Or even even if it's even if the person I'm talking to isn't giving me any new information, even me talking it's about it, it, it just makes me think too. about music and yeah. you know it's like yeah. it's good. It feels energizing to Absolutely. talk about the process. Yeah. It's it's and like earlier I said, like it's ever evolving, and I think that's what's so cool about music is like this is said already. I already said this, but you'll never know everything. Right. Right. And people, you might forget something and someone's going to remind you because they have a fresher mind in that area at that time in their life. Right, right. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, uh, so I wanted to share it really quick. Um, I wrote this rap verse to uh, my friend Nathan's, uh, he, he's been producing and learning. He's got one of those push things where you, like, you push the button, like the beat pads. Oh, kind of like what Eli uses? Uh, no, uh, does he use that? He has some kind of thing yeah. he's using. Um, yeah, he probably has something of that. This is like a really big uh, square one. It right. has a lot more. I know the kind of stuff you're talking producing. about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, kind of like a, it's like a boom pad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. But this like in metal. But it's MIDI, so you can make yeah, any yeah, sounds. Exactly. So you can assign universe. sounds to right. it or get packs that go to it. Yeah. He made a beat and I was writing this thing. But I one of the things I really like with rap um, is using uh, inner rhymes. Yes. I think that makes yes. such a fascinating thing. Somebody who I think everyone should listen to um, especially kind of the more older stuff of his is Earl Sweatshirt. He's a part of that odd future wolf game, like Tyler the Creator. Yeah, he, yeah. He's just the way he rhymes. Like half the time, I don't even know what he's saying, but right, I'm like, right. that is so intricate. Right, right. But I wrote this. I thing. like using inner rhymes too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This whole thing is like one big rhyme. It's um, uh, but I mean that I be beam and believe me that I'm eager to see, eager to be breathe and beliefs that I'll be bringing to be catch me murder and everything. No one gonna be blasting. So I mean, er, but I'm, er, but I mean that I be beam and believe me that I'm eager to see, eager to be reading the beliefs that I be bringing to be, because remember and everything, no one gonna be blessed. It's like it's like fast rap, but right, right, in right. it rhymes at the same time, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was really different. Because normally when you write things, like I said earlier, those set things are a lot easier to say. Right. Um, but yeah, I just want to share that with you because I'm really proud of that. But yeah, anyway, that's really cool. That's really thanks. cool. Yeah, I, I, that that'll hopefully be a song that I'll release. Um, Nate's been producing, making beats, and everything, but like I just kept. Not finding that one that really caught my ear, right. and then he played this one for me, and I was like, "There it is, we right, got right, it." Right. So we went to work on that. But um, let's see, I don't know. Um, you know, what? we'll end it with one of my uh, favorite songs we play. It's a song called "Poison," poison, which you heard as well. Um, oh yeah, I have stuff down. So four. Um, fair warning, though. I know you're never supposed to say this. I haven't played this song in a while, so if I forget yeah. the lyrics, <laughs> we'll blame it on the 17 million viewers making me so right. nervous. Right, yes, yes. Okay. Or we can blame it on the bossa nova. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> bossa nova. Oh, there's a whole Blame video. it on the bossa nova. Yeah, there's a, there's a video of this guy who's like, he's going total, he's going complete bossa nova over there. <laughs> Funny story when I recorded this song, I do this, um, I switch into 5-4 or something like that for like a measure and I was having a really difficult time uh, recording it without without uh, singing along to it. Yeah, so yeah. when I recorded this with my friend Caleb, I wrapped a towel around my head so I could whisper it so I could sing along. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. actually have a... I totally <laughs> get that. Yeah, I totally so get so that. Because to... you're not right, because when you wrote it, you weren't writing it like, now I'm going to go into 5-4. Yeah, you were just like, this is where I'm doing yeah. it. But it's all about the vocal case. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's just so funny. So I was like, that's I was awesome. like, tell the one. But now I realize that's something I want out there because it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I literally had just tied it around my right. face. <laughs> Can't breathe. Man, yeah, it's a song called Poison. Thanks again for having me. I appreciate it. of your poison lips that I fear I must refuse A dark and lonely road is ahead But what else is there for me to choose I've looked at all my options to find that I am out I'm overwhelmed with doubt This melancholy cloud Surrounds me up and down I'm without a way out Of this cold and vicious 
that one or I, I played that at the song project uh the old version of it yeah. and um that's like always on my set list i i, I think the ending, ending of that song especially is really important and do we stay the same remain without a plane of view for self reflection it's cause for self inspection of our hearts like our hearts like who you true like you're true to yourself you gotta really understand your feelings because you're gonna feel and right. you have to pay attention because your right. brain is you have to make you some something. kind of sense of it yeah. yeah your brain is always telling you something maybe it's telling you in a really confusing way right. but it's telling you something right. Right. There's, there's key things or like warnings or you know trust this da, 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 yeah. you know and so that song is kind of just written like about feeling lost and needing to find and understand what's going on right right yeah yeah, no, but yeah so thank you i, I really yeah. appreciate it this has been really cool uh, actually, went on longer than I thought it was going yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I really dove into. <laughs> Once you start talking about this yeah. stuff, it really is fun to it talk just about. Flows right? out. I yeah. wonder how many times I said like this interview. <laughs> uh, Two hundred and forty-three. Oh, you've been getting. Uh, yeah, you keep, keep, so that's the paper. Track. It's okay. Perfect. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you were talking about like uh, with this, the meaning of the song, and, and you're saying like you know, learning this kind of internal language, right? Yeah. Of like how to make sense out of the things or of our feels, mm -hmm. you know. That brings me kind of back to when we were talking about the creative process and how, you know, anything we do, we do in life is about practice. Yeah. And we get better at it. Yeah. You know, and 
at the time we were talking about that, I was saying how in the creative space, as a society, we don't tend to give that enough credence, right? right? Yeah. You know, that it's like, yeah. that it's hard work, but that even the creative things that we think of as like, oh, creativity, like there's people who think like, well, it's just floating through the air, and yeah. sometimes it channels through me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but we can, we can improve that, and I think the same is true, you know, it's a lesson for life, too. Yeah. You know? It's like those internal things, it's all about like, you, you have to practice to be a human. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just, yeah. you know, people, it's like, you can't just wing it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can. Yeah, you find <laughs> we that. mostly do. But, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But the Every day is a new day. You can't yeah. like, see around corners that yeah. well anyways. Um, do you find, this is kind of like a weird question, but like, do you find that as you've gotten older, life, living life, day-to-day -day life has gotten easier? Definitely. Yeah? Because it's... Figured it out. Yeah, but more figured out. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. like practice makes perfect. Yeah. You know? I remember a long time ago, I... I've always been interested in like Zen mm -hmm. um, and some Buddhist philosophy and whatnot. And yeah. um, there's a, uh, a yeah. Vietnamese Buddhist monk named Thich Nhat Han, who wrote some really fantastic books. But um, one of the things he talks about is this idea of um, uh, of practicing, you know, mm -hmm. practicing to be human. Yeah. And you know, he talks about like how it's like how we we take for granted that all these things, these endeavors that we we do in our lives mm -hmm. take practice to become good at them to become a good businessman to become a good guitar player to become a good father all Teacher, these things yeah, yeah. Uh, and yet we seem to think that all of the most intrinsic uh, or, or human qualities uh, if they don't just come to us naturally yeah that there's that they're, then they're they're false mm -hmm. but that everything we do is the same he said like if you want to be a happier person don't just think about like how uh, you know, like, oh, I just need to be a happier person yeah. without, like, what does that really mean? Yeah. And why isn't it something we, that would take practice, just like everything else does? Yeah, like, why would we think that yeah. that doesn't take practice? He was, like, yeah. saying, like, like, put a sign above your bed that says smile. Yeah. You know, like, get up, read it, and smile. It doesn't matter if it's a real smile or not. Like, yeah. it's, it's sort of like the fake it till you make yeah, it, right? Yeah. But, like, he said, like, the more you smile the happier you, you will be. Yeah, yeah. Because you might be faking it at first, but eventually mm -hmm. you're going to be a person that smiles a lot. Yeah. And it's going to make people around you feel good, yeah. which is going to make you feel good. Yeah. And sure then eventually enough. it becomes real. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, it's like we, we get so we get so caught up in this idea of authenticity. Mm -hmm. You know, like, well, like, and then and then bringing it back to music, like, oh, as someone who's, who's writing, you know, from this passionate yeah. place, there's authenticity there. Yeah. You know, but all writers practice. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. that doesn't make it less authentic. Yeah. No, in a way, no. it makes it more authentic. Exactly. Because yeah. you're refining it. You're making it as real as you meant it to be. Right. Per se. Right. It's funny that you say a lot of the stuff you just said. Um, have you ever heard of the Landmark Forum? No. Okay. Well, so. It rings a bell. Yeah. So it's basically a uh, forum that uh, I went through before I did the It's like a self-help thing. thing, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, it's, to, it's to teach you that um, we are meaning-making machines, right, and right. nothing actually truly has meaning except for what we apply right, to it. Right. Buddhism, a lot of it's about being present, right? Right. Yeah, right. in this, they're telling you, like, literally, they say, nothing in life matters, uh, n there's no meaning to anything. Right. Um, and the the only thing that matters is now. There's no such thing as the past. There's no right. such thing as the future. Right. There's only this present moment. However, in your day-to-day -day present life, you can do things to live into the future you want. Right, right. And you declare it. You say, I declare that I will become this, therefore yeah, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? But it's like, so yeah, a lot of the stuff you said, like, rang true in my head, like, with what I did with that. Uh, actually, I bring that up because uh, the similarities in Dave actually put me through it because he's, like, a huge advocate for it. Um, it was really cool, really cool experience, but... Yeah, it's your, the, the one of the things that they say is you can only be successful is if you're authentic, your yeah. authentic self. So when you said right, that, I was right. like, hmm, you know, because it because this is, sounds kind of I don't know if this is kind of stupid to say, but is it possible to be authentically inauthentic while you're making yourself or while you're refining it? Of course, you know, like right, right? Kind of because like it would have to be right because right? you're because yeah. you're you're not always going to be the thing that you envision in your head. Yeah. But the only yeah. way you're gonna be is if you do is if you that. practice it. Yeah. You know? yeah so there has to be a yeah. moment, there has to be periods of sort of I guess you could call it inauthenticity, yeah. right? But it's if, really if, just if you're not hurting learning. people with it, it's not I feel like right. there's different stages of it. You right. can be inauthentic within yourself for a positive reason. Right. Like the smile. Right. Because they did prove that if you continually smile, you're basically triggering that to yes. these things. You can yes. train your brain. I saw a, a picture about this uh, this girl who said in her class every time she read something funny, she'd click this thing. 
she was training her brain so when yeah. she hit that, it would click and make her happy. Right. Or if she was feeling sad. Right. Wow. Right. Right. Super cool. And it's it's because we're like, honestly, we're far simpler machines than we think we are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like we yeah. make ourselves so complicated. Yeah. yeah. We have but it's really pretty simple. We have has, yeah. we have, you know, conditioned responses. Yeah. And most most of the things that most people do throughout most of their lives yeah. are conditioned habitual responses yeah. to, to input yeah. and why can't we change what those responses are of course we can we yeah. do it all the time we just don't think about it when it comes to things like our emotions or mm -hmm. our the way we treat the people around yeah. us i think we there think is that's some other that's thing you know? definitely like cemented but it's, i feel like like we said earlier about like how i said some people are just able to get through like a for example a break yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 but i feel like there's there's but there's some, so much room in there. Yeah, like there's, yeah. There's, no, you're right. A there specific is. situation is going to elicit the same response from everybody. It just depends on how much it's going to affect them or impact them. Right, right. That, uh, compared to someone else. But yeah. it's so interesting. So yeah. cool. Yeah, I feel like you could start one of these for like Sunday. Right. <laughs> well, you know, it's like one of the things that, that I've like I noticed over my as I've gotten older is that I'm much less the 29 attached. years of life. In in, in all my long 29 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and much less attached. So like yeah. when I told you before we started about the losing that hard drive with like four years yeah. worth of music, yeah. there's a certain level at which I feel like, oh, it's so tragic. But then it's sort of like, well, what is my being upset about it going to do? Yeah. It's not going to bring the music back. Yeah. All it is is my being upset about it is probably only preventing me from just moving on and just making yeah. more music and yeah. not worrying about it. Yeah. Because like in the, in the long term, ultimately, yeah. what is my grief exactly. going to change about yeah. the situation? You were able to identify Nothing. that the meaning you were applying was not there. It's a right. story. It's, right. It's, it's just, just a story yeah. we, we tell. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's like, okay. It's, 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 you can go so deep into conversation oh, yeah. about that topic, too. But yeah, yeah I love that absolutely. Stuff. Yeah. I'm glad that that didn't affect you that bad, though, because that... That sucks. Right. I'm sorry you lost right. that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it does suck, right? Yeah. Like, I had songs... Bottom line, that, it sucks. Yeah, because there were songs on there that, that are now gone, because they yeah. weren't really in my head. They were yeah, just in my, is, in my yeah. studio. But but I look at it, then it's like, well, it's an opportunity now, because I had an album I was working on, and I was like, well, now it's like a chance to go back and look at those songs with a new view. Yeah, fresh I'm not caught yeah. into the way I was recording yeah. them. So. Absolutely. Um, anyway, before we head out, I'm going to say, let's see, next week, the 28th, I've got Derek Hart. Oh, cool. uh, I'll be down here. Tell me to play Evil um, Yes. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I, of course I will. Yeah, that's a good sign. Uh, and the week after that is Dario Ray, uh, followed by Darren Eldridge, and then Eric Patton, and then Andy Rumsey, my good buddy. Cool. Uh, Dave McRae will be down here, Glenn Case. We've got a whole bunch of people. Hey, and next... Friday night is March 1st. That'll be our, the very first premiere of our song project at the public library at 6.30, I believe. There'll be an open mic. And then uh, Don Hawkins, who's a really great songwriter, uh, worked as a professional songwriter down in L.A. for a while, I believe. Uh, really, really killer songwriter. Uh, he'll be our first guest. Uh, I'll be interviewing him, and then he'll play a set of music. So that should be awesome. It's free. It's at the library. Um... And that's all I got. And make sure you check out, Josh, do you have anything upcoming you want to plug? Uh, yeah, um, I've, I've got a show uh, March 9th at the Knitting Factory. It's a hip-hop show. Hip-hop and R&B, I always mix the two. I beatbox during that, too. So imagine the beatboxing over amplification over a million-dollar sound system at the Knit. Sounds really cool. Especially when they really dial in the bass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds cool. Um, but uh, otherwise, anything that you might want to look into is available on my website. On my website, joshuabmusic.com. There's a section that says tour. You no, that's that. not the word B. It's the letter B. The letter B, yeah. Joshua, letter B, music. All one word. J-O-S-H-U-A-B-M-U-S-I-C.com. And there's a tour tab. You click that. You can see all my upcoming events. I put everything on there. There's details. And if there's any questions, you can always find me through my social media, which is also very clearly listed on my website. Love to have anybody who might be interested in hearing more. Yes, because we love events. social media. Yeah, we love social media. Right. We've Stay talked about it all time. <laughs> Never close it out. As we stream on Facebook, yeah. right? We're like, Facebook <laughs> is shit. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks again, man. That was Thank really you. awesome. I really it appreciate pleasure. it. Thanks. All right, I'm going to cut us off. Bye, friends. Goodbye. Million viewers. Goodbye, you million people. <laughs> Low battery. How is that even?